This is a debut from High C featuring Tony A, and this one's called Leave My Curls Alone. Take a hint from Ice Cube, get rid of the curls. You know, I, I got, I got some boots curl. that go with this, too, that look Do really it. sharp, man. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll get some Remember strong... Remember Robin Harris City? All the girls that just love me. Come on. But my Jerry girl's greasy. All the girls that just love me. What? But my Jerry girl's greasy. Control. Dr. Dre is in a motherfucking house. So right about now, and I say, Yo, see, are you with me? I see, E, are you with me? Here's a little something by the nigga like me that never should have let me buy tape from Steve. Ice Cube would like to play in dope shit mixed by Dr. Dre. Since I was a youth. I like concert, now I like the motherfucking rodeo Buying a tape for two, that's what the hell I do You don't like Tony A, well fuck you, this is a game And I'm in it, Ice Cube will fuck you up in a minute With a right, left, right, making you sick And then you see Tony A is on the mix Tony A
Welcome back, everyone, to Rodion Radio. And I felt goofy watching myself in that fucking video, but uh, it was well worth it. 30 years ago, December 10th, our album dropped on Hollywood Records, distributed through WIA. Uh, rest in peace, Steve Yano. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it with my boy, Croft. I call him Croft, but you guys know him as High C. What's up, brother? What's up, man? Hey, you know what? I'm glad you're here, man. And you fixed me a drink. Yeah, this is that goddamn 70, man, that Don 70. What's, what's in it, though? T t tell us what's in it. Look, we take it. I don't want to give up all my recipes, but take a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But this pineapple juice and a little bit of seventy, a little bit of something else. All right, so shit a, to keep you up. It's a little bit of pineapple juice with a dash of paprika. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, man, hey, you know what? Uh, how did you feel watching that video, man? Man, that that video is. is I love all of it, man. It's huh. just, it bring back the emotions of like the Hughes brothers, and I want to like right talk about that a little bit yeah yeah we'll get into it but, <laughs> but you know it's, it's cool man it's like seeing sam perkins like people here was like man is that sam perkins and it's like yeah us in our our baby deer leg stage yeah exactly bro now now you know what's crazy man is that um back then your hair was juicy man. it was wet how did you keep it like that man just go my arms <laughs> <laughs> the the fucking world's a curl huh yeah and then when you think you got it again, hit that bitch a couple more times. That shit was nice. And then though. when you about to leave, you say, "Know what? I'm about to leave." One more time. <laughs> no. Everywhere, the mother be mad. The pillowcase be all fucked up. Be all fucked up, huh? That should be like coming to America. Remember that scene? <laughs> yeah. No, but you know what? Uh, um, okay, let's go back to that video really quick because let's talk about who was there. Uh, Sam Perkins was there at the time he was playing for Sam the for Perkins. the Lakers. Yeah, he was he was a Laker. Yeah, he got in with his man Big Smooth. Yeah, I like man Sam. Shout out Sam, uh, Allen and Albert arguing with each other. The Hughes brothers. That yeah, went on to be big directors in the yeah. game and shit. As a matter of fact, that was their first video that they uh, directed for us. Yeah. Uh, Albert and Allen, uh, they went on, for those of you who may not know who they are, they went on to do Dead Presidents, Menace of Society, American Pimp. They went ahead and did um, The Book of Eli, yeah. Uh, yeah, The Defiant Ones. So yeah. They did a lot of a lot of dope shit. And uh, our video was actually their first video that they ever first did. First video, man. They, I, I never forget, they put up to the set in the Volkswagen. The old, not the new bugs. Right, right. The old, like the 60-something-something. Something. When, they, when they had the bounce and shit, they... Got in the car. One of them pushed it a little bit. The other one popped the clutch to start it up. When you got a stick, yeah, people that got a stick shift, they know what it is, like the battery and shit. So. Yeah. And you know how I, you know how I knew that they were like we were like really gonna do something, man. Mm -hmm. It's when they put us in a hotel the night before to spend the night there so that we wouldn't be late. Been, yeah, you know. And I remember spending the night like, fuck, we're really gonna film a fucking shit, video. Yeah, it's like. Like that shit is dope, man. Yeah. But though that, though that wasn't our first video, but we'll get into it when we do play the next one. But Easy E was there, rest in peace. Easy E was there, Quick was there, AMG. Yeah, G, like everybody, man. It was like people that was there that didn't even get in the video that was right. like coming right. to check us out because if I don't know if you pay attention to it though, but that's Venice Beach, right? And it don't look the same. Venice looks totally different, man. I don't right. know if you've been out there. I've been out there probably. A uh, month ago and shit to mm -hmm. go get some tacos at this little spot. That's that's a good spot. The red right. tacos, shit's is fire. No, you know what? Uh, I went out there a couple of months ago and the the you know where you work out. Yeah, it wasn't open a, just yet. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I don't know. Uh, you gone recently? Is it open now or no? I haven't. I, I never went that far. I just go to the to the little taco spot and take off. But you see all of it. it's it's different, bro. It's, now, 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 let me ask this. I don't think I ever asked you this the last time. Because well, you were here before when I interviewed you when we first started Rodian Radio. Mm -hmm. And then for the, my 100th episode with Soren Baker. Yeah. And then uh, now, okay. Uh, and I've been trying to get you on Freaky Tales so we can talk ghost stories. Cause yeah, I know, I, 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 you know me. That's, <laughs> I won't shut up. I know because you, you believe in Bigfoot, UFOs, and all that shit. Yes. Okay. Now, that day when we did it, do you remember how old you were? Shit, I... This is the 30th uh, anniversary. Yeah. yeah. I did it when I was 10, so I just I turned 40. <laughs> you, you turned 40 again, right? Yeah, I'm 40. Okay. Now, now you know what? Uh, um, let's take him back down memory lane really quick. Uh, I want to ask you a question, and then we'll talk a little bit about, once again, how we met. Uh, how did you meet Steve Yano, where Steve, to the point, said, tells me, hey, there's a guy that was working at the back of the Swami that wants to rap on the mixed tapes. How did you meet him? Well, I'm going to take it back a little bit further, staying in, in, in the hood, staying in Compton. And I had a couple of homies that used to get up. Man, my friend, I just went to his funeral, man, named Gary. We call him BB. 
Uh-huh. Just passed away from COVID. And um, BB, man, rest in peace. This was like last week. I just went to his right. funeral, so it's fresh, man. BB was like, Croft, man, I'm about to go up here to this Rhodium. They be uh, like hiring people. They looking for help and this and right. this and that. And I was like, man, you sure? He was like, man, let's just go. So he, we jumped on the bus and shit. We went through a couple of hoods. You know, back then it right. was kind of hard to get from our neighborhood to this bus. You had to go to like Compton Boulevard. Of course. Catch the Gardena Green Line bus yep. and ride through. I hated that shit. Ride through this hood, that hood, this hood. I mean, because you're always every, looking over your shoulder. You're always, every, every time. So BB told me, man, let's go. Jumped in the, in the uh, Jumped on the bus. Got off and just started looking around. I'm like, damn, this shit big as hell. Like, I don't know what to do. You know, he was like, right. man, just, I think he went and we was messing with the dudes that sold weights. Remember how they used to sell, like, weights and all that right. shit? And then I just started walking around and I seen a dude that uh, that was selling clothes. That was George. Remember George? The little yeah. fat little French guy yeah. and stuff talking and just hit it off with him. He hired me. So I used to always, like, on the lunch break, hear, like, this music coming from somewhere. And I'm like, man, I'll go and go by. And then when I walked up to the stand, and I'm like, who playing this shit? Well, and then the when I seen it him? with Steve, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like, well, you're Japanese. Yeah, but he knew every fucking record. He knew yeah. everything about everything. And I was like, you can't judge a book by his cover, bro. Like, he knows his shit. And he knows the artist. He knows the name of the song. He knows when it was made. The label. I mean, he, the label. He was, like, really sharp with that shit. So I'm like, bro, it just started really gravitating. So every time I would work, take a lunch break or a break i find myself right back at that stand trying to see what was up or what's the new yeah. shit and this and that and that's how we made yeah. it off and i was already like working on shit like going to the studio like the black hole back in the day okay black hole was like like kenny and the black hole just doing little demos and shit right off the little funny sounding keyboard shit shit was like sounding crazy as fuck but i'm like okay. okay and then i let steve hear some shit and he was like man that's when he was talking about you but we never met each other right so he was like man i got somebody that's gonna be dope and this and this and that once again didn't know i'm thinking he's talking about somebody just another dude or whatever right and that's kind of you know yeah because i know when i met you you were a senior at centennial now were you 16 or 17 at the time i probably i don't even think i was a senior yet because i was still I was uh, probably in 11. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's different now. I go from 10 to. Right, right. Back then, it went from 10 to 12. Yeah, because uh, I remember when you had hit me up, and this is before we actually started doing mixtapes. You said, I got a performance, mm-hmm. and uh, we were performing at the inside the g- gymnasium. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then you said, bring your turntables, bring your speakers, and oh, everything. Yeah. yeah, see, I think I think that was, uh, damn, man, that was like 88, because I graduated 89. Okay. So it was. Yeah, I was thinking I was a junior. Yeah, it had to be. Yeah. yeah. No, I remember that because I remember uh, um, you uh, picked up my, st- you picked me up in your Elko. Yeah. Uh, um, white Elko with the green and gold leaf. Gold leaf. Uh, I'll stand it in the background, in Had the back. The Dayton's with the gold knockoffs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you picked that me up. That was a motherfucking headache. <laughs> Why was that? Because the Dayton's back in the day, like, I'm, I don't know if the kids know, but. They used to call them, what was the nickname of them? Killer Daytons. Killer Daytons. They will run up on you and just start, sh- just bah, 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 bah. Like, like, pull like, you out the car and take off with your shit. So. That was probably, at least for us and our generation, the first rim oh, that was over a thousand bucks, right? Yeah, yeah. Easy. And back then, a thousand was like 5,000 a day. Like a thousand right. bucks back then, it's like you had to have some money to. And yeah. I had the chrome and I had the gold knockoff in the middle. Uh-huh. With like the gold little hub and shit, and so every time they look, they'll see the skinny little motherfucker. I was skinny, and they'll see me like, man, they like, I'm gonna take his car. And they they just didn't know. Every time I rode, I had to have it right, of course, strapped up. Now I'm looking for the because back then the racial profiling with the police, that shit was through the roof. Yeah. They didn't give a fuck. They'll just put you over. They'll catch you going. And we used to just put our seatbelts on at the last yeah. minute to take your hat off and do whatever you got to do so the motherfuckers will leave you alone. But I had a little spot for the strap. Yeah, uh, I remember when we left the high school, uh, there was a couple of dudes, like, we were driving, there was a couple of dudes looking at you, and we were at a red light, and I'm like, oh, shit, I hope they're not going to do nothing. <laughs> then you fucking throw up the B at them, and I was like, don't start <laughs> shit, man. Like, just get me home safe, you know? But that's one thing that a lot of people don't realize about our, our era, at least our generation during that time, that crack and fucking hip-hop, like rap, uh, and gangs were at, uh, at an all-time high, all man. Time. I mean, it was, you know, and, and, um, I guess we got in right, right when that shit was fucking taking off because, uh, NWA 
their 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 music hit the rhodium swap me first yeah. so we got to hear it first yeah. you know and and you know rhodium beta is an extension of that that's why i thought it was important for you to, to be here so that we can celebrate this 30 year anniversary of our album because the swap meet and and steve yano is pretty much what brought us together yeah you know and that's where i met easy at too yeah because easy kept going to steve yano spot uh -huh. And then once again on my lunch break, every time I get a chance or a break, I run up to the motherfucking stand, uh -huh. and I was getting this shirt made with the neighborhood on it. And then Easy E was like, "I remember he said he saw it, huh?" <laughs> yeah, he was like, "Man, who making that shirt? Man, they gonna get killed making that shirt." All right. <laughs> and Steve, he didn't know what was up. He was like, "Man, I don't know what this shirt means, man, but." Everybody that come up here and read this shirt, they leave mad, man. What is it? Why are they so angry with this shirt? I said, oh, Steve, just remember that time we was rolling? Right, right, right. I was like, oh, this is cool. Don't worry about it, Steve. They, yeah. No, man, it's this shirt, man. You got to get this shirt out of here. What's uh, my boy that used to do the artwork on uh, it? Artie. Artie. Yeah. Artie hooked the shirt up and he put the, you know, put the shit on there. Yeah. Whatever, put the hood on there and the shirt hanging up in there. Yeah. He, he was like, man, they're just mad. Every guy come up here, they, they mad, man. They yeah okay like it, it, nwa releases uh a song called fuck the police well they give it to steve first mm -hmm. so for him to put it on a mixtape and i remember he didn't want to put fuck the police on the cassette yeah so he just put ftp yeah now if you're from compton you know what you know ftp what that, is yeah, that's so the, you know that's set, yeah. so people used to go and like i want that tape and they will see it and he just happened to put the label in red i remember that shit <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I don't know why guys, and the way he talked, I don't know why guys were always tearing it off. <laughs> yeah, they and I was it. like, Steve, do you know what the fuck that means? Yeah. Fuck the police. And I was like, no, dude, yeah. it means something else. Yeah. And he didn't know. but He yeah. didn't know. That, that's, that was the funny shit, bro. And, it was, <laughs> and it, it, you know, when I, when I met Easy, he had a, uh, a box of vinyl. Uh -huh. I remember they was trying to push that fat girls on my job. Yeah, LA that is was the place. The a side. Yeah. The fat girls on my jock was the A side and the B side, if I remember, was Boys in the Hood. Yeah. And the fat girl on my jock, but the Boys in the Hood shit, and it was the label was just it was just printed. And now, was, let me ask you this and be honest. Mm -hmm. Did you like Fat Girl on my jock? Um, I, it, it was cool. But it was just like a cool record because back then it was more like, I'm going to be real, like the New York shit was like everybody was like rapping and saying yo and this and that, picking up kind of they swag or whatever. Right. But we we always had our own shit. Like like Ice-T, I heard. I don't know if he was from back east, but the six in the morning shit. We always had our own right. shit, but we was kind of adapting some of they slang, if you would say. You know, if the, I don't want to be like a motherfucker. Ah, Ice-T don't know. What he, but right. you know what I mean. Like we right. were saying certain shit that they said, but we always had our own lane. So to me... It was like a cool little record to where it was like some hip hop shit. But right. then when you put on the boys in the hood, now motherfucker, you talking about our shit strictly. Right. You talking about the streets, you talking about the niggas still like our Alpine. We used to pull the radio out. Yeah. And used to walk with it. Like the kids see y'all don't know about that shit when you walk with the radio. You have to take your radio out and your steering wheel back in the day because they'll steal your shit. Yeah. So take your steering wheel off, walk with the steering wheel, walk with your radio. <laughs> one day some crazy shit. It's true. And then they made the uh what was the other one with the face? They start you didn't have to take Oh the yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, it was just the face like you could just it. Yeah, yeah, of a so, CD player. But yeah. back then the Alp, the Alpine. The Alpine. So when he was talking about caught him in the car trying to steal the Alpine, all that shit. Right. So that shit was like I was like, "Oh shit." And then the base of that shit Oh my God! I'm like Dre was on some mastermind shit back then. Like he was just. It's true, man. It's true. Yeah. And you know what? I talked to a lot of East Coast cats mm -hmm. that, and I asked them when you guys first heard the NWA shit, the DOC, the Above the Law stuff. I, like, what were you guys thinking? Because we we just thinking like, okay, that's just some like real shit. Like West Coast is finally like making a name for themselves through this type of music and shit. Yeah. But yeah, man, a lot of people out of New York, even though they showed us no love back then, nah. uh, and that's another thing we, we had to live through. Yeah. New York never showed West Coast never, any love. Never. Now it's different, but back then, and that's another thing we had to live through. Uh, uh, your shit would never get played in New York. Never. Okay. They had this shit. We was out there, man. We was. Uh, I was out there and they had this shit. They was uh, I forgot. I don't know if it was uh, I forgot what station, man. I ain't gonna blame. I ain't gonna even say because I don't want to okay. blame them. But they had it. It's called the West Coast Minute. 
The West Coast the Minute. The West Coast Minute, bro. I never forgot that shit. And it was like, they'll play all that shit. And it was like, because they was trying to be politically correct right, and all right. this old shit. So the West Coast Minute, and they'll put on some record that we don't even know who the fuck it was or right. a B-side of some record. And then they'll go, and, and it's a, it'll be like, you know, some whatever, how it sounded. Then they'll make it scratch. But that was the West Coast Minute. You know, let's get back into this Nas and this. I'm like, motherfucker. The wow. The West Coast Minute. I never heard of that shit. Yeah. I'm going to hit up my boy Thoro out there yeah, when I go back out there. It. He know what I'm talking about. Yep, the West okay. Coast Minute. So they put on a little bit, like, it's funny, like clowning. Right, exactly. Make- See, you know, and, and one thing that a lot of people may not know to the, from this generation is that out here in the West Coast, you know, on K-Day at the time, mm-hmm. on AM, uh, they played East and West. Yeah. Hell yeah. East and West. Like, we loved... All that biz and all that KRS-One shit. I was, I was all over And that that's shit. where I was going because when you used to pick me up, you used to always play KRS-One, yeah. Rakim, yeah. Biz Markie, yeah. you know, MC Shan, whatever. Hell yeah. You know, and yeah. that was our shit because we grew up on East Coast exactly. rap. Exactly. You know, so... Exactly. You front on LL. Hell yeah. Damn, man. This is fucking yeah. dope-ass fucking... Isn't it funny that, like, back then, like... I'm bad was like on some gangster shit. Yeah. Like we used to think that yeah. it's like that, you yeah, know, I'm survival. Bad. The you 808, know? the bass, and back then too, it was all about sound systems. I had like two big ass 15 inch woofers right behind it. You know, the Elko's is two doors, so right. it's only room for a certain amount. That shit was all speakers. So like the mirror, I had to turn the sounds down to look in the rear view mirror because it was shaking. It was too shaky, yeah. Yeah, it was fall off. You had to change the alternator because it was draining the battery and shit. It was a bunch of crazy shit. Hey, do people still have 15s in their cars today? I hope not, because I can't hear it now. What'd you say? <laughs> See, I didn't even hear what you just said now. I can't hear it because of that shit. Right, right. That shit st- I can't, I ain't gonna lie, I don't know if I even got, like, older and my tolerance level was down, but right. it's like, I don't even want to hear that shit loud like, like that no more, bro. Like, where your eye at, like, shit be blinking and your eyes start and shit. Start, like, fuck start watering? Hell yeah, I'm like, man, turn that shit down, bro. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna ask you, Crop. Just speak a little bit closer to the mic because I need the public yes, to hear to hear this. Now you know what? Um, I was keeping tabs on December 10th because I really wanted to do this, and I called you a couple of weeks ago and I said, Crop, we got to do this. Yeah. You know, you, you know, if if he would have been alive, Steve would have been here today. Oh, definitely. You know, yeah. and Steve would have shared some stories uh, because Steve really, really looked out for us, and I really loved the fact that Steve and Susan were. You know, a dynamic duel. You know, there yeah. were a couple, and they looked out for us. Uh, because I remember at first, we started recording. You no, know, of course, we were doing them the demos at, at my house, and then uh, we went to audio achievements. Eventually, when we got signed, yeah, we were recording there. That's the same studio where Dre recorded. You know, all his shit, the NWA, the Michelle A stuff. That's yeah. in the city of Torrance, and uh, that studio's still there, actually. Is it? it, it but I thought it, they closed it, it down. No, it, they closed it down. Then they reopened it, and then. The last time I was there, uh, they actually, uh, I went in because the door was a little bit open. I went to a restaurant right around the corner and um, the door was open. So I walked in, all these kids in there smoking weed. And remember back then they just had one big studio, yeah. the piano and everything. And the board, the Trident. The right, old, uh, right, the old Triton board. Mm-hmm. Well, now they broke it down into four rooms. And uh, each room, there's a laptop and a computer, oh, and, uh, I mean, a laptop and a keyboard. So that's your studio. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I mean, back then, yeah. a lot of people don't realize that you could never smoke in the studio. Nah. You, you, you were not allowed to smoke in it. Like, yeah. they were really fucking strict. Yeah. And block time. I, so, but the studio, like, the manual equipment, the smoke, what it does is gets into channels and shit like that. They don't know, like, the board. You have to really get a board cleaned out because right. the smoke go through the, the whole circuitry of the board. Right. And it can fuck up shit or just make shit sound. You know, it was a, it was a, it was a thing about... Uh, I mean, th- I think the, wise. The, the biggest enemy to equipment was fucking dust. Dust. Because if we had a... If you had a mixer or, or just a regular board, uh, you could hear it when you go yeah. up and down. You hear... Because the frequency. Yes. Touch yes. something or you ever picked up something off the ground or rub your shit against the carpet and touch something and it popped and shit. It's, right. That's that frequency. So when you move in the, the faders and shit like that, the dust and dirt, right. the frequency causes it to go like you can hear that shit coming through your sound and yeah. everything like to me, like not to change the subject, but the Michael Jackson, like, I don't know how. That album, bro, I listen to it, and that album fucks up any album almost that you can put you can put it against now, and it's been, like, how old is that? Oh, w- which which like, one, the Thriller one? The Thriller, yeah. Oh, man. The one man. that, uh, Quincy, you know, the, the yeah. that shit is so clean, bro, till this day. Right. Like, you don't hear shit, and you can put it up against any album, like, just recording technique, and that's, to right. me, like, what 
like Dre and Quick, you know, some of those dudes like that that just yeah. you know, really focus on it, clean sound, no smoke, like, you know, go smoke outside type of shit. Yeah, it's true. And, and it's funny because for for the producers and the DJs out there listening, back then I remember Dre sampled and Peach the President for the yeah. Ultimate Breaks and Beats. And because they had a little, you know, inside the, the little loop, uh-huh. it, you know, the, the loop is, yeah. but it had a little, and he was like, oh, I can't use it. I can't, yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. And he was like, that doesn't bother you? And I'm like, nah. Mm-hmm. But you know who really, really changed a lot of that shit? Was DJ Muggs when he came out with the Cypress oh, Hill. Oh, hell yeah. Because <laughs> it, was sound like, yeah. yeah, it almost made it seem like yeah. he didn't clean those yeah. records on purpose. Yeah, or like he threw them around. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so back then you had to have like, but I, I know what you mean about that Michael Jackson record because yeah, that, that shit, shit is just sonically like I don't know too many records that can top that shit. Hey, you know what? That's the that's the uh, the best selling album ever of all time, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, I think it had got to be like up there with some Beatles type shit or something. Yeah, man. Okay, uh, a, a couple of NWA questions: Boys in the Hood, Gangster, Gangster, or Eight Ball? Which one is your favorite? Oh, of course, Boys in the Hood. That's just a. Oh shit! Boys in the hood, they do country. Uh, the boys in the hood are always <laughs> hard. That shit didn't touch everybody. Okay, With you know guitar f- and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit there. Man, man, man you, you know what's one really, really touched me remember, on Eight Ball? Mm-hmm. Remember, throw throw in my old tape of Marvin Gaye's greatest hits, yeah. and then he said, "Cruising through the East Side, South," uh, and you hear fucking yeah. "Let's Get It On" playing yeah, in the background. Dude, that's when you could like put little records in without getting sued. Yes, shit. dude. But no, that that Eight Ball, that shit was hard though. Yeah, dude. But I mean, Fuck. as far as like world renowned, of course, and of course, accepted all over the place, was Boys in the Hood. It's just, I don't know, it's something about his voice. You know, you know, and I speak on him because we both knew him. We both met him with actually before he actually ever took off. Yeah. And and one thing I will say about Easy, that uh, Alicia was always real with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, he never fronted. He never acted because he oh, he was God, real. Bro, he was, bro. And I called him on a cell phone. That's when we had cell phones, and you yeah. had to hurry up and talk because that shit was like expensive as mm-hmm. fuck back then so i'll call him and he'll pick up man and just say what's up man what's up man I'm like what's up and like, i was happy as fuck like man right. it's easy. he picked up for me right and shit and I, I was like we was somewhere like a couple years ago probably a year ago and quick was talking and quick was like man i see the one introduced me to easy e and i don't even remember it because I, I i know he wasn't lying because we met him first at the rhodium i met him first at the rhodium right. and when i see dre man every time i see dre like he, he Dre, hey, what's up, high C? Like he never like would walk past me or never like front like you said. Just some good ass dudes, man. Just yeah. real down to earth. Ren, I ran into Ren, I think in Detroit, uh, with Doc when we did a show out there like probably a couple years ago. And Ren is right. the same way. Like man, what's up? Like just right. Like we've been hanging for years and shit. Like some good ass dudes, man. I got certain dudes I just fuck with. That's what about Jinx? Oh, Jinx, that's my nigga. Jinx is just wild as fuck. Yeah, you know, Jinx is crazy, he man. Is. Dub C, like, you know, me and Dad's like, we, like, the the older generation, man, we don't give a fuck about where you come from, this and that, it is what it is, dudes done battled, we done straightened it out, we done right. fixed it, like, we good, you know what I'm saying, and it's just a respect thing, like, we made it. Yeah, yeah, you know, I bring up Jinx, uh, you guys, because a lot of you guys don't know that uh, when I met Dre, I met Jinx the same day, that's his cousin, and then I met Easy the same day. The first record that I ever did uh, scratching on was for Jinx, and uh, Dazzy D was the rapper. Okay, yeah. and uh, Damn, the, the guy who uh, put that record together was Calvin Anderson, uh, mm-hmm. VIP owner, and we did that at Echo Sound. And then I met Pooh and fucking uh, King T there. Yep, okay, Tila. yeah, yeah. Now, 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 here's the crazy part about Jinx. I've been on Jinx. I think he was about either 16 or 17 years old at that time. But when I interviewed him here, he had a big bottle of Grey Goose vodka, mm-hmm. and I think it was Belvedere. And during the whole interview, he drank that whole motherfucker, bro. Yeah. Like, hitting it, okay? <laughs> tone, I'm telling you, Tone. That's how he sounds. Yeah. And, and then, okay, the interview's over. Mm-hmm. And he comes up to me and goes, hey, what's up? And I was like, what's up? And he goes, what you got to drink? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> going hard. I, I'm, huh? Yeah, I'm like. Bro, I care about you, man. I don't want you to drive yeah. back home like that. He drank like three modelos. Yeah. Rolled up a cigarette. All right, I'll call you tomorrow. But you know, Jinx always has some shit to talk about. 
I had me and Jinx, man. We was on, you know, the, the guitar center on Sunset. Yeah. Me and Jinx outside the guitar center talking this shit, and he's like, "Yeah, man, I'm put, you know, I just, hey, man, see, you need to, you know, he call you young, yeah, young man, this is what. Yeah. And man, we talking and shit, and so, you know, we in L.A., so when we see motherfuckers walking, you automatically look up. So this dude was walking by. This motherfucker got a hood on. And he got his hands in his pocket and he walking like this real fast. And me and Jinx talking like me and you talking. So we looked up like this to just, you know, make sure we're cool the way this motherfucker walking. Guess who it was? Who's that? Tupac. No shit. By himself. We like, Pac, what the fuck are you doing, bro? He's like, man, what's up, I said, yeah, what's up, Jinx? I said, man, you straight? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm straight, man. I'm just going around. I don't know where the fuck Pac was going. On Sunset. At night, late at night, ask Jinx, he'll tell you. And Damn. we just laugh, like, man, Pac, what the fuck, you need a ride, bro? Like, no, nah, no, nah, I just had this shit on belly. Do, do you remember the, the, the time that we met him at the club? We went to the Gavin in 1992 in yeah. San Francisco. Oh, yeah. After the Gavin, we went to a, we went to a club, and uh, Pac was standing outside, mm -hmm. and we were tripping because, like, man, that's Digital Underground. Yeah. You know, we didn't know him as... Tupac, you know, we yeah. took them as Digital, Digital Underground. Underground. Yeah. And that was the day that me and you saw D-Nice perform. Oh, yeah. Yeah, D-Nice. Uh, they called me D-Nice. That shit was the shit, though. Yeah. So I remember you were like, that fool's lips always be getting juicy when he be rapping. <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, and then that shit, that shit kind of went left when they, they made that Tim Dog song and all that shit. And then the homies <laughs> was like, man, what's up with this shit? I'm like, bro. <laughs> okay, look, we're going to talk a little bit about the Tim Dog song really quick. I'm not going to mm -hmm. say the name of the song, mm -hmm. but it was F. Compton. You can say it. That he made a song called Fuck Compton. Yeah, this dude from New York did a song called Fuck Compton. And let me tell you something. He fucking, you know, rest in peace because he, yeah. he passed away. Yeah, I think he did. He fucking wrote his own death certificate with that fucking yeah, song, bro. Was, man, I, everybody was trying to I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know dude. She don't hear it, but he, yeah. he was fucking up with that one. That's all I can say. Like, it wasn't even like, fuck the rap shit. Like, yeah. You got different sets. You got South Siders. You got Bloods. You got every, like, he didn't, he didn't understand what he was doing. When he no, did he that. didn't. I, I don't think he did. No. Because that's just like me probably saying something about fuck one of those. That neighborhood, whatever. You know, one of the, the uh, they call them boroughs or whatever, you know, from uh -huh. out there just saying, and I don't know shit about that, but I've been out there. I've been to Queens and Manhattan and shit. Mm -hmm. and we did, uh, you know, the um, Rap City and all that shit, Harlem or whatever. But, I mean, I ain't going to say. <laughs> well, it's like that. saying, you know what, with all due respect to my boys that live out there because I stay out there when I go, it's like saying, fuck Harlem. Yeah. And there's a lot of fucking history over there, bro. Ooh. Yeah, some heavy hitters. Yeah, so when they released that fucking song, bro, mm -hmm. and I, I remember I told Steve, Steve, you selling that? Mm -hmm. He was like, no. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. But anyway. That shit was crazy. But they was looking for anybody at that time, bro, to just take their frustrations out. And he was like, I remember, like, I felt bad. Like, they had him hemmed up, before, like, D-Nice. I'm yeah, like, man, shit, dude, ain't, you know. Yeah, because any, anybody from New York that was representing New York, mm -hmm. They were getting sweated by dudes from out here, like, "Hey, man, you you you, you, you with Tim Dog? Yeah. That type of shit." And they just thought, like, automatically, if you from New York, you know Tim Dog and shit. It's like, hey, yeah, you know, they like, no, I don't, we all fuck Tim Dog too, man. We shit, we, <laughs> we love Compton. <laughs> fuck oh Tim man, Dog. hey, you know what? This fucking thing got me buzzed already, bro. Mm -hmm. You better slow down, slow down. I I know we got a lot bro. to go, man. We got to do like Jinx and shit. Go, Fuck, bro. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? Um, when we come back, we're going to sh uh, show two videos. Yeah. And when we come back, I'm going to make three phone calls, three surprise phone calls. We're going to okay. put on the headphones and we're going to uh, talk to somebody. Okay. So we're, so we're good. So everybody, once again, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, let them know that High Season in the motherfucking building, celebrating 30-year anniversary of our album dropping. And um, I did it when I was 10. Yes. So today he turned 40. Happy birthday, my brother. Hey. Yeah. So we'll be back, you guys, 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm not your puppet. The three verse version of it. God so, damn. That's going to take an hour. It's gonna, we'll be back in an hour. Okay, so we'll be back. <laughs> story 
I like to tell about a situation guys and girls know very well. Everything is fine and dandy and you love it till dope. Make you treat another person like a puppy. Now I talked to this girl for about two weeks and I've been many places and seen many freaks but this girl was just fly. Her body good looking, I was a bitch just flat and she was like looking. I got to know her by spending some time. She gave me things of hers for some things of mine. Everything was going good, could nothing go better. Anything she wants to do, I do was just let her. Three weeks later, I noticed the change. Something wasn't right, she was acting kind of strange. Took some money out my stash and stuffed it in a purse. She thinking things are getting bad, man, it's gonna get worse. Well, look like I got myself a few problems. By me being hot, see, you know I'm gonna solve them. She ran out the house and broke down the street. Stopped the box of crap from my homeboy Pete. I couldn't believe what I was told. He gave a freak double up for a thick piece of gold. So I creeped up on the door and said, yeah, I caught you. And by the way, where's the link about you? This relationship just ain't gonna last, girl. You're gonna have to get rid of your past. Cause yeah, you're on my dick, dick, ding-a-ling. Trying to tie my arms and legs with a string. My money, mm-hmm, I know you love it. But let me tell you one thing, I'm not, I'm not your puppet. Get off my d- Oh, man, I wouldn't touch that d- Why? And with your wrinkle, oh. I can't be your lover Hopped out the bed about three o'clock Stumbled to the door when I heard the knock I thought, man, now who in the heck could this be? When I got to the door, she said, Croft, it's me She pushed away and didn't use much force She said, I know we going out I said, yeah, of course I'm staring at this girl, wondering if she all right Cause when the heck we supposed to go this time of the night But the only thing that was on my mind Was just jacking this girl for a big behind She thought that I forgot That she was the one that was smoking rock I looked at the girl and said, babe, you know what Steve said? Your butt ain't nothing but a bass head She disagreed, she said, stop lying Her feelings were hurt, so she broke out crying I said, baby, you gotta help yourself Don't expect help from anyone else This relationship just ain't gonna last, girl You're gonna have to get rid of your past Cause yeah, you're on my dick, dick, ding-a-ling Trying to tie my arms and legs with the string My money, mm-hmm, I know you love it But let me tell you one thing, I'm not I'm not your puppet It's all because of you. I woke up fussing. Saying to myself, who knows where the f*** to live The girl was dumb. She was straight out sprung. Get dope was a rope then her soul was hung. Well, one day, I went to see my DJ, the grand incredible wizard Tony A. He was there because I heard the system thumping. Went up to the window, Jack Moore was bumping. I grabbed the crate just to peek through the window. The trick I kicked the wheel was getting played like Nintendo. Jumped in the window when I said, what? He had her hyped up, he was driving her nuts She seen my face and she started to scream I said, shut up, girl, you know the routine Pop the tape in the deck and we rock back and forth From the east to the west, the south and the north I got tired and said, man, I quit Tony A said, Croft, look at this chick She grabbed a rock and I started to flip Babe, want to smoke, man, this girl was a trip She said, yo, check this out, man My joke smokes in the pipe and it melts on my hand just a fool, your life is going too fast I know this relationship just ain't gonna last Cause yeah, you're on my dick, dick, ding-a-ling Trying to tie my arms and legs with the string My money, mm-hmm, I know you love it But let me tell you one thing, I'm not I'm not your puppet Yo, the little story that I just told About a girl living life with a head that's swole Dope ain't me, high seat can't cut it Girl, I know you love it but I'm not ya.
Get out, punk, lay down. Nine o'clock in the morning, yes, I got dressed. Thought about my girl with the big fat breast. So I called her up and asked, could I see her today? She said, okay, so I said, I'll see you, Shantae. Hung up the phone, then I threw on my clothes. I pulled some tissue off the road, I blow the boogers on my nose. Put on my chain and my boots and things. About to step out the house and heard the telephone ring. I grabbed the telephone just to see what was up. She said, give me the place and time and we could hook up. I said, okay. Tell a tramp is through, I'm Dental Hollywood. So check this out. For all your dental needs, be sure to come to them because they'll be there to take care of you. That's Oxydental in Hollywood. Check them out. Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this biatch. It's your boy Cap G. Subscribe to Rodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, sir. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is King T chilling on Rodium Radio. Tune in, subscribe every Sunday and Wednesday. Fucking with my man Tony A. The Wizard. West up, this Lazy Dub, and you're tuned in to Rodium Radio right here with Tony A. The Wizard on every Sunday and Wednesday, 7 p.m. Make sure you like and subscribe that. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm right here at Local Negro, Tony A, Rodium Radio. Tune in.
Yo, yo, what's up? It's your boy MTO right here with Tony A. The Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure you like and subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, everybody? It's your homegirl, Lovely, and I'm right here at Rhodium Radio with my boy Tony E. The Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and check them out every Sunday and Wednesday. It's Nina Barretta with Rhodium Radio and Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in Sundays and Wednesdays. Like and subscribe. What's up, everybody? This is a Puppet Master chilling with El Triste. Follow and subscribe to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rashidi Harper, director, executive producer from Hip Hop Uncovered. And I'm here at the Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Stay tuned. Coming at you live through the Harbor area, you got MC Poncho, the number one Sancho. And you're checking out Rhodium Radio with my man, Tony A. the Wizard. Check it out. What's up? This is Ronan Gray. You're watching Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to tune in every Wednesday and Sunday. What up, this is Mr. D over at Rhodium Radio with my homeboy Tony A the Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, y'all? This is Uncle Spliff, man, from Spliff DTV. Y'all need to tune in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rhodium Radio with my homie Tony A the Wizard. Yo, you're tapping in with the Steel City Hustlers. This is Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A the Wizard. Motherfucking legend, make sure you fucking like, subscribe, share, do all that shit. You know what's cracking. Yo, it's your boy Troublesome Man, TM Gang Live in Full Effect here at Rodeon Radio with my boy Tony A the Wizard. You know what it is, boy. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Ernie G in the place to be. I'm chilling here at Rodeon Radio with my homeboy Tony A the motherfucking wizard. Bought those locals forever. Yo, what's up, Ben? It's your boy Young Hype here at Rodin Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. Yeah, doge. Yo, what's up? It's Anthony Campos, a.k.a. Big Citric. Inviting everybody to tune in and subscribe to Tony Vision, Rodion Radio with your host, Tony A. The Wizard. What's happening is your boy Bobby Castro and I'm here at Rhodium Radio with the homie Tony A, the wizard. Make sure to like, subscribe, check out the shit. What's good, y'all? Eric Bobo from the mighty Cypress Hill, chilling right here on Rhodium Radio with the homeboy Tony A, the wizard. That's right. Hey, everybody, this is Cliff Ritchie, and I'm here on Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Was cracking it to your homie Crazy Boy, Blue Rain Music. You tuned in to Rodium Radio with the homie Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in every Wednesday and Sunday right here. Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 217. And I am your host, Tony A. The Wizard, with the podcast that slaps your culture, fat ass with a fat ass dick. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and jump butt naked right back into it with none other than I see the Croft doll. Hey, you know what? Are you ever going to reveal what the H, the I, the C stands for? Nah, they, <laughs> if they know my shit, they should know. They If they know the mixtape, because I said it on there a couple of times. Okay. And now I'm the type of person, I'm going to just give you a hint. I like to know a little bit about everything. Right, right. IQI. So that's what it has go. to do with. Okay, now here's one another thing that people always want me to ask you. Uh, Can you ask him if he's Mexican? Man, I'm everything when I'm in, when I'm in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, that, I, whatever I'm in, I'm that. Yeah, there he is. There it is. Okay, you know what? Somebody had a question about Jack Move because I'm white too. When I'm in that white thing, I'll right. be like that too. Yep. Reckon I go get a little bit that daggone thing had me screaming like this here. Yeah. <laughs> so that got that in me too. Okay. A song called Jack Move. Somebody asked about you speaking Spanish in there. Yeah. Now you said it. Me high sees one mean padre. Uh, yes. 
Finish no, no, me gusta chinga tu madre. Madre, there you go. Okay. Hijo de la chinga, madre <laughs> puta. Hey, I'm gonna tell you like this. I grew up, me and the homies, man. Like I was, I was like the, the wolf that was raised with the, with the, with the, you know, the salsa yeah. with the, with the gente. Yeah. That's how, that's how I got out, man. And right. when you growing up, you learn all the curse words first. You don't mm -hmm. learn all of the prayers and <laughs> our father. You learn it. Verga, cabrón, pinche puta. All that good like shit. I learned, learned all the shit. I was trying. I was freaky. I was trying to get a little bit, so I learned how to say, you know, dame la puntita. <laughs> you can say it. Solo la puntita. Solo la puntita. Yeah, let me just put the tip. Like, I don't know. Just certain shit. I just learned that, you know. Right. And I, boy, you're so crazy. <laughs> Next thing you know, like, ah, da, 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 da. Ah, ah, ah. That'll work. Hey. Uh, sha, sha, sha. <laughs> let me stop, man. Okay. I got the kid watching this shit. It's all good. Okay, really quick. We played uh, I'm Not Your Puppet. Mm -hmm. Kind of looks like an old Godzilla movie. Yeah. But um, a lot of people may not know, number one, we had a guy from Australia come th down. You saw in the very beginning, it said Ian Fletcher. Yeah, we was balling. Yeah. Right. That's what we did, Tom. We paid that guy we 20. Said, look, <laughs> motherfucker, bring us somebody from right, down right. under. Exactly. And we want the video to be filmed accordingly. That's it, how we exactly. stretched out. Do you remember this motherfucker had a tight... Uh, uh, leather pants with no drawers on. Yeah, that, that's that. That's that shit. That different. <laughs> that's that Jim Morrison awesome, shit. Yeah, that boomerang <laughs> shit. So, so. <laughs> but Tom, let me tell you this. Go ahead, go ahead, like, go ahead. I, like I don't want you to skip over this point because this is a pretty important point. Who was the first, like, minority black brown group on Disney? We was on Disney. Motherfuckers really overlooked that. We was on Disney. Yes. And Disney, I don't know what the fuck was going on, what they was trying to do, what they wanted to get into, but they wanted to put their hands in the rap. They wanted to get into this urban yeah. music stuff really bad. And they had a lot of money. A lot of fucking money. A lot of money. Yeah. They I wanted us to change some lyrics. I'm like, I ain't changing my lyrics. Like back then, you know, I'm full of testosterone and shit. Jerry right. Curl wet. Oh, I ain't changing shit. Hey, we'll give you like, you know, $80,000 $80, and a trip anywhere oh, okay. in the world. <laughs> Can you change dick to stick? <laughs> yeah, shit, for 80 grand, I think I could. F fuck to luck? Yeah. You know, and the next thing we know, we're in fucking uh, Hawaii surfing. Yeah, no shit. That's crazy. <laughs> Couldn't get much higher. Exactly. Okay, then, okay, fuck, bro. Oh, I got to give a shout out to Daza because Daza yeah. was in the video. Yeah. I'm not your puppet video. A lot of people don't even realize that Daza was in the video. She went on tour with us as well. That's, yeah, she was. Yeah, man. she was our dancer. And uh, uh, oh, once again, Ian Fletcher, I don't know if he's even still alive, yeah. but he filmed that video. Yeah. And we filmed it at the Rhodium, where I call the Rhodium the home of the West Coast mixtape. That's you true, bro. You and right. I challenge anybody else to no, challenge me right. on that. Nobody couldn't find that. You, you know? right. Nobody had that shit like that. Right. Nobody. And we got signed from a mixtape. Yep. That, that's fucking and that's crazy. that's where all the commotion was about. Like when people come up there, because people was coming from different cities. Mm -hmm. and they was coming from out of state, bro. And mm -hmm. they'll come get a tape. And it was like, that's that's the phrase and how it was coined, mixtape. It was really a fucking tape. Right. It wasn't like a mixed CD or a mixed MP3 or a right. mixed, you know, the stuff that they have now, which the technology is a lot better. Don't get me right. wrong. But it was really a mixtape that spun around. <laughs> and so like hey let me get this mixtape and that shit was hard to do we didn't have no computer to press buttons they got shit now you press a button and it matched the bpm matched the speed and right so it's like cheating now right right now we had fucking fun doing that shit then the other video was uh sit in the park once again uh that was uh well let's go in chronological order our first video was i'm not your puppet that was ian fletcher then we had to cut him loose we went with the hughes brothers then we filmed leave my curls alone uh -huh. and then we did uh sitting in the park, and in that beginning intro, Tony Lane's 1964 yeah. Impala, and then my Cadillac yeah, uh, yeah, that they rode in yeah, on. The Cadillac was the... Yeah, that was the, Jack, the shit. The Jack car. And Hughes Brothers did that as well. We had fucking fun doing that and shit, they used man. that actual clip. The Hughes Brothers used that for they, uh, they promo reel and shit back in the day. Yeah. They put that little part on there, and it was like something that we just, me and you, right. I think, kind of thought of. And yeah. I said, man, this is what I want to happen, and I want it to be like this, and I want it to... You know, look like I'm dreaming and seem like it was shit worked out. Well, because that's what was that's what we saw growing up. So I we just implemented it. And you that know? used to really happen. Like dudes would run up on you, Jack. Right. Give it here. Right. Now, uh sit in the park and then now I, I wanna challenge people, not in a like in a mean spirited way, but 
uh, I'm trying to find anybody else before us, and I hope I'm, I may be wrong. Anybody else who filmed a video at Echo Park? Nobody. Yeah, and then I soon after that, there. in 1993, they came out with that movie, Mi Vida Loca. Yeah. And they filmed it there. Yep. So uh, I'm asking people, you know, anybody that knows any music videos out there were filming. And that it. shit look different now, too. Yeah. Like Venice Beach, it's like, man, it's. Yeah, it's, it's we did a lot of groundbreaking shit that a lot of people don't know. So I just wanted to bring it out since we're here talking about it. And yeah. fuck it, why not? But you know, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a couple of phone calls real quick. And I want you to put the headphones on real quick. And uh, uh, hey, you know what? Uh, somebody go open up the back gate. Call or, my dick is in your mouth and you want to say what? Yes, because somebody, somebody said that Erica left her phone here. So let's go ahead and make this call. Let's see who it is. Let's see who it is, Crawford. Let's see. Let's see who it is. It's test two. Testing, testing. We're making the call. Who the who the fuck is this? Yeah, we'll I'm see. I'm breathing hard. I'm alive. <sighs> I know where you live, motherfucker. Hello. Yo, Croft, do you recognize his voice? What? Wait a minute. I'm good. Sounds like the guy we used to have like this. He had this. Never mind. It must be high. <laughs> Wait a minute. See, I got these headphones on. He he can't recognize your voice. Keep going. No, I recognize him. Keep going. <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> and I ain't even faded. No, you don't recognize. Uh, no. Can, 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 Give us a little bit more so that he, hopefully he can recognize your voice. If not, then he's out of here. Hello? I can't, I can't give it away. Say it with your chest, little nigga. <laughs> Who was that? Yo, you still there? Oh, Y'all niggas are crazy. <laughs> you ready? You want me to give that you a hint? That ain't, that ain't, the rock. That ain't uh... Kurt, that ain't uh no 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 no. Curtis, that no 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 no. Oh, I'm always no. All I'm gonna say is that you better have his money. That ain't Jason. <laughs> Man, what the fuck, is Jason? <laughs> <laughs> bruh. Tell that ain't you, bro. I got these know. headphones on, man. Tony A got these headphones from the swap meet. Yes. <laughs> nah, nigga. See now, yeah, now, it. see if nah, I had my regular. Nigga. Nah, bruh. Nah. Nah. Get G. That beard, that's get AMG. That's beard here, girl. That's beard here, girl. That's beard. G. On my mama right now in my gym playlist, nigga, I got Vertical Joyride in rotation, bruh. When I feel like I can't go no more and I need to do one more set. Now, you know what I play at the gym? Don't pay The booty up. The booty up? Somebody might, might have ate too much of a burrito. See, if I, if I, if I play that, then I'm going to fuck around. Be walking around with my... <laughs> he like my... the, the, the burrito part. That's <laughs> yes, right, exactly. <laughs> Gee, I love you, man. Happy, happy y'all both, man. Happy 30th year, man. And it's crazy. It's 30 fucking year. And, you know, I was at that. After he told me that, you know, the interview coming up, I was thinking about all the records on your shit. Hell yeah, man. I was man. like, Wow. Hey, no, but just seeing well, you, you in know, the motherfucking you know, I, uh, the I'm Not Your Puppet video I, at the swap meet. Yeah, that was awesome. I got that picture y'all y'all, y'all sent me. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that day. Because I've only been to the rhodium. That was my second time going. You know, I was new to California. Hell yeah. So, Gee, uh, can, I, can, I, can, I get, can I give him a little bit of history, though? What's that? Can you elaborate on the first time you bought some khakis? <laughs> remember that shit? Uh-huh. <laughs> G, look, he don't want to talk about that shit. G, wow. tell about it, man. Wow, I can't, I can't remember, but when you just said it, I remembered it, and I remember. I never had khakis. Never had khakis, oh. but that's just kind of like I'm the culture. Really, I worked. I, I was a break dancer. I wore jeans and like uh, work, uh, you know, uh, sweats and stuff like that. Hell yeah! So I, start, I started hanging with my fella yeah. from the CPT. Took me to get some khakis. I think one of us was kind of cool. I mind you, stay tight, man, like that. Yeah. I was comfortable with my khakis. And G, hey, don't the y'all don't, y'all don't get it twisted. G got some height on him. He ain't no little nigga. He ain't like my size. He he tall, man. He got he got some size on him. He tall, and and not just saying you know, that because he on the we, phone. 
But that nigga can rap his ass off. Like, y'all ain't even heard some of his best shit when he just fucking around. Like, G is a real motherfucking rapper. Like, he can real, he a real lyricist. Like, he put shit together. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Sure. Absolutely. He's the, one that, he's the one that produced. Can you work with that? Can you work with that? Much love, G. Put y'all over there checking. Uh, go, go, go ahead, Croft. Go ahead. Go tell him. That Don, that Don 70. Don 70 oh, yeah. with, with pineapple a juice. pineapple juice and a little bit of ah, ah, in there. Yeah, a little bit of a paprika. So. That's awesome, man. It's, a, it's an awesome time uh, celebrating an awesome year. Thank you, man. For some awesome fellas. And I think y'all, like I told you before, I think y'all need to do it again, man. Because realistically, from from the standpoint of, 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 of the, you know, the storytelling and the beats and all that shit, yeah. y'all was ahead of y'all time and in a perfect place for the records that y'all made. But in my mind, y'all was like a, a, a West Coast Pete Rock CL Smooth Dope. because it was the perfect, yeah. perfect DJ producer rapper combo. That's and, a, that's a good honor, know. man. I I accept that. I, I appreciate you. No, for I sure. Ain't bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that's him. Man, G, we bullshit. need to, we need to do again, something nigga. together, man. Because I was I was out there on the well, road. You know, I, I want to call you. I want to call you. Uh-huh. But I know you're a very, very, very busy guy. Yeah, you know. So I, mean. I don't call. Man, call anytime, yeah. man. It's nothing but I love you, bro. You my brother. Call anytime. Bro, you we all brothers here. Yeah. We, we just gotta have it. Yeah. We hey. Have it. And I was out there on the road for about three years doing bitch better have my money. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. You owe me money now. <laughs> I know I do. I got a big check waiting on you. You know, but G, G say, G with the high top fade. Yes. And I, yeah. I say, Croft with the ball ass head. Open up your Louis uh-huh. bag, bitch. You heard what I said? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you heard what I said? All good. All, hey, man. All, all, the, all the records, all the hits represent us, and they represent our era, and it's always good to let them motherfuckers know anytime, anywhere. What we got going on as a crew? Crew is awesome. Uh, we still here. Hell God man. willing, we gonna be here a long time. A God bless you both. Man. You guys are my brothers. I love you. Love you. Back. I love you. Um, Tom, we gonna do that sushi. Hell and, yeah. Uh, AMG. I, I, we gonna do that drink. AMG's in the motherfucking uh, house. You already know. Hell yeah. My nigga. Yes, sir. All right, my brother. You stay blessed. Holla, brother. Thank you. Man, I didn't wreck it when I had these headphones on. I could, you know, I'm good with voices. Hold on, I got one more phone call, homeboy. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's see who, let's see who it is. Okay, hold on one second. Let me get the Bluetooth real quick. Uh, jumping off again, real quick. Give me one second, everybody. Okay. Um, that was good to hear from G, man. Man, that's my nigga, man. And a lot of people don't know that all of our records, AMG. Second to none, DJ Quick, it, they, we all came out the same year. Yeah. 30 years ago. So Dick let's Lance. go ahead. Let's go with this phone call real quick. Call him a dick's in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Let's see. See if you can recognize this voice. Name that voice. Hey, what's going on, bro? You live, my brother. Live. That ain't nothing but Kinky Kelton right there. I know that little black. You know that boy? That little black boy right there. That's my nigga. We done toasted shit man, up well, together. Well, 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 I know what it is, man. Congratulations on, the, on that K-K. 30 man. <laughs> the black I ass K. That's right. What's up, my nigga? All the way from the hood. Man. Talking with Crawford, it's all good. Hell yeah, man. One chocolate uh, nigga. Congratulations <laughs> on that 30th, bro. Man, I appreciate you. K, I love you, bro. I love you too, man. Nigga, not man. I know that boy, like cut through. See how G when I put first put on the headphones, I couldn't really tell. Right. Because the headphones was, you know. But when yeah. I heard K, I already know. I think K That's out of right. the whole crew, K got the deepest voice. Like he he said, Hey baby, how you doing? No, he got that Lou Raw voice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> took, and took all my bitches. <laughs> <laughs> if my did. shit all high, I'd be like, "Hey, what's up, Andy?" He said, "Hey, baby, I'm black guy." <laughs> I'll talk to you later, I say, "Fuck you." I remember, I remember we were on MySpace and somebody said, "Hey, what's up with black ass? And I was like, "Who in the hell is that?" <laughs> and then uh, KK goes, "That's me." Uh, <laughs> that's dope. For those of you that may not know, this is KK second to none. Second to none, if you want it. Yes. How's it going out there, K? You holding it down? Oh uh, yeah, man. Just two. Cool. Uh, 
chilling, uh, you know, man, doing family stuff, and yeah, yeah. wrapped up my my first solo project. Hell yeah, that Hell one yeah. I heard that was that was a banger. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, cool, man. Banger. That'll work, my brother. You know, one thing, Kay, that uh, uh, first of all, I want to say also happy anniversary to you and D as well, because a lot of people may not know that in 1991, uh, Quicks, uh, Second to None, AMG, and High C's album, we all dropped the same year, man. So, yeah, same year. So congratulations to 30th to all of us. To all of us, brother. You know what? Thank God that we all still alive, man. That's a true blessing. Yeah, right that's there. a blessing right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, all good, my brother. Okay, so, Kay. All right, Kay. Listen, man, we got to get together, get a drink, get you on here as well. So we'll definitely be talking soon, my brother. Yes, sir, man. And congratulations to you both, man. And peace and love to the world with you, you know. Hell yeah, man. I, I appreciate you, Kay. Hey, man. It's all the same, bro. All right, yes, my sir. brother. You stay blessed. All right. Do the same now. All right, later. Yeah. Okay, we got one more phone call. You may not recognize this person, but this person, he's from... Uh, not in the United States, really? but yeah, he's not in the United States, but he's been tr trying to track you down. Curtis he wants Harmon? to talk. No, no, Curtis Harmon. Watch, you'll see right now. Hopefully he picks up. Hopefully he picks up because he lives four. Wait a minute. Hold on one second. We got one more phone call, y'all. God damn. We need to Hello? Hey, how's it going? Brandon, is this you? This is me, yeah. The, yeah. the one and only. You got High C on the line, my brother. Introduce hey, yourself. Hey, How you doing? How you doing this evening, man? What's going on, brother? Uh, I'm doing pretty good, man. Just chilling down here in Canada, watching Rhodium Radio. You know what I mean? Also, congratulations, man, on uh, 30 years of one of the biggest hip-hop albums to ever come out of the West Coast, man. Congratulations on that. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate it, man. Hey, man, I, I gotta say first and foremost, man, I gotta say that's probably one of the most revolutionary records, you know. You guys were the first hip-hop album to actually come off of Disney, and you know what I mean? I gotta say, they actually censored a lot of stuff there, so the fact that this yeah. album actually came out on Disney, in my personal opinion, is absolutely phenomenal, man. You actually took Walt Disney, and you actually, you know, brought him to his limits. Yeah, we made it work, man. It's, it's you know, trying to keep it as... as clean as we can <laughs> but then trying to keep it as real as we can and and it's it's a balancing act that i think we we figured out pretty good yeah i gotta say it definitely is phenomenal man and like, again congratulations on 30 years man and the one thing i, I want to ask you since i have you on the line man one aside from this phenomenal record man what are your th your third studio album man that you actually released was on rap a lot records uh high life hustle man yeah. i always wanted to know how did you actually initially get connected uh, with jay prince and of course what was it like being a west coast hip-hop artist being signed to such a legendary southern label well it the, the the get into the details of the business a little bit that album uh we did that album i had like nate dog nate dog probably probably one of his last records that he ever did was with me that I don't want to know. E-40 was on there, Sly Boogie, man. Sly Boogie is one of the dopest MCs to me, like, in a long time. Man, I had uh, James DeBar singing on there. Quick did a lot of work, Sugar Free. Uh, man, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm forgetting people on there. Big Steel was on there with me. And that album was done, and I did a distribution deal with rap -A -Lot, so I own my own masters on that. I just used their distribution outlet, and, and Jay Prince, Lil' James, he like man, he's he's a he's a like a real big figure in rap, not just southern rap, but a real big figure in hip hop and rap. And I I've never heard of a guy that investing cattle like stock, like cows and steak and stuff. Like he did that stuff way before, way ahead of his time, man. Like he was just like that guy. When I got a chance to sit down with him, go to his office, he had the awesome car collection, like cars that I haven't seen, like million dollar shit, like. The guy is like really, really, really powerful in the business, man. And he just took it. He did me a solid, like a big favor of like using his distribution outlet, man, to um really get that shit off, man. And it's like I uh, we was always cool with like Scarface and Bush Bushwick, rest in peace, Willie D or whatever, because we used to go out on tour and like hang with him and shit like that. But we we I mean, it was just a blessing to be in good hands with, with Jay Prince, man. And it's 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 really like a big, big, big help for me in the industry, and a shout out to him once again for helping me get that off. 
And he also did some phenomenal production work on that record as well. Because I do know you had uh, uh, DJ Quick, like always, running the production on that yeah. as well. But he produced some phenomenal joints on that record as well. Yeah, I was. I was. That's when I was stretching out, like Tone to tell you, like I always did my little beats and shit like that. And I just was like, I back then I was just wasn't probably taking it as serious as I was with my rapping and lyrics and putting stuff together because I'm more like a storyteller and try to paint pictures when I rap or whatever but like I always had like the turntables I always had I had techniques back in the 80s and shit like technique 1200s I wanted the good shit I had the drum machines I was doing all that shit like I can't produce and I felt like I didn't want to tell people that I can because I didn't want motherfuckers bothering me like I don't (laughs) want to make no beat for nobody else I'm doing this shit for myself which is kind of selfish just like right now like I'm in the car business I have my own uh, car business and I don't tell people I know how to work on cars because right. I don't want them coming up to me and be like I heard a sound motherfucker take that shit to the shop right 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 I don't want to work on <laughs> all good, I don't want to work brother. on nothing but Brandon appreciate you man DG Immortal all the and way now, from Canada and thank, thank you both of you guys man, man what's the hey what's the french the fries <laughs> what's the french fries with the gravy and, and uh get what's the name of the uh the french fries and shit oh uh, uh, uh huh Poutine. There you uh, it's called a poutine down poutine, here. Poutine, man. I done fucked some poutine up out there, man. Some, not some poutine. Some poutine, some poutine, and some... Punani. Po- and it had me poutine. <laughs> and some poutas. <laughs> so. Poutine. Yep. Yo, Brandon, uh, uh, I'm going to put you in contact with them at, uh, tomorrow, and so that way you guys can set up an interview. Hey, most definitely. I can't say no to that, guys. Uh, but I don't want to take up too too much of you guys' time and get, leave a line open for somebody else. But I see the congratulations again, man. And Antonio, you as well, man, for making this monumental record 30 plus years. And of course, happy holidays to both of you guys. Man. Thank, Thank you, my bro. Man. Same to you, man. Enjoy. You stay blessed, my bro. We'll talk soon. God bless, man. All right. All right. We done. Come on. <laughs> okay, we done. Back to the shiznit. Yeah, back to the shiznit real quick. Let me go ahead and set up my time real fast just to make sure because we got some more videos we're going to be playing. Anyways, I had a hit up G. I had a hit up KK. Man, that was good. That was, man, thank you, brother. Man, I had to make a it special. It took me a bro. while to catch G because I had the headphones. I couldn't really hear him. I know G boy's good. I told him, man, I want you to say A and G is not because I ain't saying that shit. That's, yeah, that's how he is. <laughs> I'm telling you, G is the type, bro. He uh, He's like... Like I said, he came to our crew like a little bit later. Right. Because it was us. And we had to buy him some cat, get him right. But I know we G got pictures. Type, he'll go into a crowd of girls and be like, what y'all bitches, what y'all bitches doing? Y'all bitches fucking tonight? No, no, no. And you some know, of them will laugh. Dude, and dude. some of them will be real funny, but that's just how he is. I remember What's his up, hat. Y'all bitches? y'all bitches fucking tonight? And I'll be like, this motherfucker. But they, the girls right. will really laugh and they'll like... They'll just drop their shoulders like, oh, he's a big, funny guy. Oh, okay, know? I'm going to say this. Okay, two two hats that I saw. AMG had a hat that said, what's up, bitch? That was a real hat. <laughs> now, I'm saying this, and I hope you guys give me a pass and I get mad at me, because I'm only reading what High C's hat said. Yeah. Nigga ho. Yeah, the nigga ho. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. the fuck was that for, Croft? Man, it's like a gigolo with a nigga ho. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did you ever patent that? Nah. Somebody probably took it and made some millions off of that. Probably. Shit. Probably. All right. But, but you like, know, like a like a like a, f- a male version of of you know. Right. Like calling ourselves a lesbian because we like pussy or a dyke. <laughs> I'm the biggest dyke you know because I'm on pussy. <laughs> but but just you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Carl. Really quick, man. Um, we got a couple of minutes before we go to break. We're going to play another video and um, then we're going to come back and I want to take some shots with you, at least one shot yeah. besides the drink. Okay. You feeling it now? I yes. I see it in your eyes. Yes. Right? Yes. Right so now. Let's go get another one, man. Yeah. Down this yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We got about four minutes. See, he just downed it. Okay. <sighs> but we're going to take some more shots. But you know what? Um, if you have a memory, Croft, of back then when we did shows, or with Steve, or at the Swamp Meet, or recording. What is one story, if somebody would ever to say, you know what, what can you tell me about Tony A, man? What, what, what can you tell me about him? How was he like? How would you describe him? What would you say, or what story would you share? Man, it's, I was, shit, there's so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, man, I don't know, can we... <laughs> the, the funny story we had, man... 
I, me being a fucking prankster that I am and always into some shit. Right. And you're going to laugh at this because you remember this. I came in here one time. We all had our rooms. We was in Philly. Oh, my God. <laughs> See? Go ahead. Go, go, share it. Share it, please. <laughs> share it. Yeah, she'll tell you. My ass, I'm always into pranks. I'm the one that do crazy shit. I do whatever the fuck. Like, I'm the, I'm the old dirty bastard of the whole <laughs> shit. So we in Philly. And I was like, man, I got to take a piss real quick, man. Tone, let me use your bathroom. <laughs> so Tone was in the room. I think he was staying with Fly or somebody. Uh, and I had somebody uh, Sonny. Sonny or whatever. So shout out to Sonny, man. That's my guy. Yeah. Hey, so I went to Tone. I'm like, man, I got to take a piss real quick. He was like, all right, go ahead, Crawl. So I went in Tone's bathroom. Say a little bit closer. I need people to hear this. I went in Tone's bathroom to take a piss. He thought I pulled the curtain back on the shower. That's when they had the shower and the curtain. I took my pants down and took a big shit in his tub, in his shower. And it was like one of them big shits like this. It was a big old one shit. One of the big old long johns. Yeah, so I set my ass on the side of the, of the toilet. I mean, not the toilet, but the tub. And I was like, fuck! <laughs> put, a big, <laughs> put a big ass turd on there. And I closed the, the, the curtain back, so... And I'm like, hurry up and got on the toilet wipe my clean myself up or whatever. And I was like, all right, bro, I left. No, but you know what gave it away? And they couldn't tell what the smell. They was like, man, something just keeps smelling. So I guess we was about to go get dressed for our event. And when they pulled the shower back, it was a big ass turd in there. I saw corn, cauliflower, all that <laughs> shit. But the shit that got me was I knew it was something suspicious. Cause you, you go, all right, then Tony, you go. <laughs> and I was like, I know that fucking laugh right yeah. there. That shit was fucking hilarious. Yeah, so we got kicked. We ended up getting kicked out the whole motherfucking hotel in Philly in the middle of the winter. That shit cold as fuck. Cold Remember, as fuck. We got kicked out the shit. But your stomach was empty, though. Stomach was empty. <laughs> and <laughs> another one, bro, like I'm always fucking up. We was, I think, headed to Detroit. And I'm like, man, I said, fuck it. I'm like, I wanted to drive because everybody was getting tired. We had to drive certain places back then. You got to drive. So I looked in the back. I saw everybody was sleeping. And I just put the heater on. Yes. It was I put the heater on. Hell, it was a devil in there and shit. I wanted and to Tom, fight that fucking day. <laughs> I wanted to. Up, he said, oh, what the fuck? I fucking sweat everywhere. And everybody was like, oh, no, we was in Arizona when I did that shit, right? It was I don't, hot as fuck. Wherever it was. And I was like, you know what? Fuck that. These motherfuckers back here sleeping. I'm driving. I'm going to put this motherfucker on. Hell. And, and he, he just, just put it back the there. Shit. I locked the window. I put all the window locks on, pop, pop, so they couldn't roll the windows down. And I'm just rolling, and I see my fuckers going. Oh. <laughs> and then Tom got up and said, "Cross, what the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> we in Arizona. <laughs> no, and then here's the here's the part. Here's but the those are like to, times to me that's pro more than music, bro. And you as my brother, right? I love you. Like we had some of the best. Yes fucking times ever yes 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 okay and then we're gonna we're gonna come back we're gonna go through some of the songs mm -hmm. on the album especially your dick mm -hmm. because there was something you'll come up on stage with oh okay so we're gonna we're <laughs> gonna do that so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and take you to a song that uh we did on the second album okay we're gonna show them got it like that then we're gonna go some ads and then we're gonna hey, come that, right back that right there japan y'all better get me back out there that that shit was Japan, bro, I don't, I, I told you, you didn't go with us that time. No, I didn't. But that, got it that, like that in Japan, I don't know what the fuck is I know. it, to, what it's saying to them. Yeah, I don't know, but, but when they told like, me 13 hours, I said no. Yeah. So, but anyways. <laughs> it was worth it though. Was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to ask you some Japan questions after. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we'll be back. Uh, once again, call somebody, take somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that high scene, 28 in the motherfucking building. And we'll be back doing it froggy style. Oh. I'm a reach out and touch it. 
nigga, yo, check it out, black. I got it like that. Tricks on my dick, girl. You can stay on back, my brother, don't act wild. We got it like that. Tricks on my dick, you can stay on back. My sister, don't act wild. Yeah. We got it like that. Hey, you wanna turn me something? I'm through with the cut. Right. I gotta fade the fuck to make the girls shake their butt. Uh -huh. yeah. After this verse that I burst, I'm dipping. Yeah. Back into the hip to catch a nickel head slipping. But since I got time, there's no need for rushing. Oh. I caught a baby girl. Hey, how you doing? It's me, Little Easy E, Eric Wright, and a lot of you know me, know I like to smile. And to thank for my beautiful smile, I want to thank Oxydental. That's Oxydental Hollywood. So check this out. For all your dental needs, be sure to come to them, because they'll be there to take care of you. That's Oxydental in Hollywood. Check them out. Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodian Radio is live. Oh, 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 What's up with it, dog? It's West Coast Gilly on Rodeo on Radio with the legend Tony A. The Wizard on Tony Vision. You know what it is, West Coast to the fullest. Believe that. What's up, everybody? This is Stefan Oriol listening to Rodeo Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Yo, what up? It's your boy Doughboy Tony. You're tuned into Rodeo Radio with West Coast legend Tony A. The Wizard. What up? It's your boy Lottie the G, straight out of Santa Ana, CA, and we're right here live in the mix with the West Coast legend Tony A. The Wizard on Rhodium Radio, Tony Vision on YouTube. Yo, what's up, world? This is Cool 187, above the law in the building. And you tune in to Rodium Radio with my man Tony Yeh, the wizard. Blah! What's up, this is Darren Vegas. You're on Rodium Radio with Tony Yeh, the wizard. Real West Coast hip hop history right here. Yo, yo, what up? Sleepy Milo in the house here at the Rodium Radio with my boy Tony Yeh, the wizard, giving us our voice back. One of the realest motherfuckers I know. What's up, homie? Show me Frankie Quinones, a.k.a. Creeper from Cholo P. And you're listening to Tony A. the Wizard on Rodeo Radio. That's what's up right there. Hey, yo, what's up, man? This is Kujo the Savage. I'm right here with Tony A. the Wizard, Rodeo Radio. Everybody stay tuned, man. It's a motherfucking hit. Yo, shout out to Rodium Radio, Tony A. The Wizard, your boy Pablo Nunez right here in the studio. Be about it, people. Que onda muchacho, I bien este miro. Kim with the black sick and the negrito de los angelitos. And you're checking out that Rodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Kilo Raza, this is Wicked from the brown side here on Rodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. 
you know. What up, it's your homeboy Infinite TGM, chilling with Tony A, the wizard, on Roll Your Radio. Make sure you guys go check that out. What's good, what's good? It's your boy Spanky Loco, and you tuning in to Rhodium Radio with that motherfucking legend, Mr. Tony A. You know what time it is, West. Hey, what up? This is Rebello the Dome. This is Dominator. And we came straight from the 805 ready to slap that motherfucking meat on your grill, bitch. Rhodium Radio, <laughs> Central Coast Click. What up? What up with it? This your boy OG Magoo, Los Angeles Airburst artist. Big chilling on site with the homie Tony the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. All gas, no brakes. Let's get it. Man, you're now listening to LA Icon, man. Right here live with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard on Rhodium Radio. Blah! What's up, what's up? This is Essa Daz, the Spanish Fly, with that reintroduction right here on Rhodium Radio with my boy, the wizard, Tony A. Yeah, yeah, what up? It's the Spanish Fly MC, Big MOC, Mr. Most MC, on the Rhodium Radio Show, baby, with Tony A, the Grand Wizard. Let's walk. Johnny D from Spanish Fly on Rhodium Radio. Your one and only Theo with the giant Cheeto. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Trish Toledo, and I'm over here with Tony A. at Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Blanca. Bobby D. presents Uncle Snoop's Army. Chilling right here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A., the wizard. Make sure you tune in Wednesdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. on YouTube. And we're back now at the Jack Off Hour, and I'm Tony A. the Wizard. Croft Dog. And I'm here with Croft Dog, and we're going to go ahead and jump by and right back into it with High C. We still haven't given away what the, what H-I-C stands for, and we're not. But we did come forward, and we say, you did agree you're Mexican? Uh-huh. <laughs> I am. Okay. <laughs> Earlier, we played Got It Like That. I don't know if I should say this, but there was a certain scene where the girl gets undressed, it's a silhouette. Oh yeah, yeah. And the girl really got. She really got naked. She really got yeah. Pussy everywhere. That poor sack. Yeah. Take <laughs> that pussy out, boy. I that said, ponana. Like, yeah, like the old man said, "Good God, everybody, girl got that pussy out." Like, like she bent over, he saw the chicloso, like <laughs> butt naked. So that was a good one. That was an encino. Steak taco. Yeah. <laughs> he said steak taco. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do, crop. Okay, because. I usually drink with all my guests, so we've been drinking since the get-go, and I rarely ever do that, but I need to pour you a shot. Okay. We don't have to take down the whole shot. We can no, sip we on it. No, take the whole shot. Fuck. You're it's, gonna 30th, it's the 30th, so we need to take... I'm going to tell you right now. Let's test your gangster. Kick the tires on this car. It's, we're going to do it times 10, so it's the 30th. We're going to do three of them bitches. Nah, dude. I won't wake up tomorrow. It's cool. You ain't got shit to do. Hi, it's you Friday. ain't got shit to do. Give me the... Let's do three of them bitches for the I, 30. I can't do three. Tony, come on, bro. All the weights you lifting and shit and proteins dude, and all that dude, goddamn shit. Dude, I'll start confessing shit that's not even true. <laughs> I was on Sherm, and I was running to the street butt-fucking naked just wearing a scarf. So, you know, and, and Crocs. So this, so this is this is one. We got. Do y'all agree, though, three? Nah, dude. No. I'm doing one, and that's it, homie. Maybe Tony, two, on, maybe man. two. Okay, to the head. Salud. That good carburetor cleaner. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> See, I'm going to do another prank or something now to get me started. Hot damn. <sighs> okay. Good God Almighty. Yeah. Okay, here we have an old school CD. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of you uh, new cats don't know about this because they don't make them anymore. That's the only reason why I'm saying it. But um, they used to make them this long, about the same height as a vinyl. So, yeah, yeah, it's a vinyl record. So when you look through them, you can look, you know, whatever. But, and then a lot of people used to just cut them in half and then just take the CD out. When all you had to do was just take this bottom part out and the CD comes out. That's it. 
And all this is just useless cardboard, but I kept it. It was dope. It was dope. Tom, let me have that motherfucker, bro. Come on, man. God damn. Okay, hold you on, keep hold on. everything, man. That, hey, the one thing about Tone, he gonna keep the good shit. <laughs> and you be like, man, how the fuck he remember to keep this shit? Right. Yes. Okay, Croft, really quick. I'm gonna go over some songs, not in order, but, and just tell me what, what the fuck you were thinking when you wrote a song, okay? <laughs> I was horny. I couldn't wait to go fishing. <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. I am so horny. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Froggy Probably. style. Is that a yeah. real position? That is. Okay. Fro fro okay. Say no more. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. I'm if trying anybody to get in my house tonight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now she already be looking at me sideways. Okay. You, you know what? Okay. Today we have songs that they do. Two verses, yeah. two verses, okay? We did that before that shit was in style with two at a time. That's true. Okay. K, that was K that called, Black yes. Ass K. Okay, now, two, two at, at a time. time. What does two at a time mean? What are you shit. talking about? We talking about a goddamn Nicki Minaj. Minaj et toi. So we rocked it from the east. Uh, what, what was it? Yeah, uh, all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> people will, people always great. wonder. Like I feel I, honestly sometimes like I feel really funny like listening to certain stuff that we did yeah. in front of like the kids and shit like that in front of like you know it's just a different time. Right. It's like but I never I never like shelter them from it. Mm -hmm. I let them know like hey this is my age. I was like 18 or 19 years old. I was learning how to curse, and every other word was a curse word. When you learn how to curse, yeah. fuck shit, dick, pussy, this and that, that. So I let them know, like, look, this is what it is, but that doesn't mean that you say everything that you hear. Right, right, right. Don't do as I do, do as I say. Right, right. Be smart, stay in school. Hell yeah, a little bit. So, yo, dick. Now, one day, I went to see my DJ. Now, but we went to a, a porno store, like a, yeah. a like. <laughs> and then, and then we bought something specifically for this yeah. song. Can you tell them what we bought? So, just once again, me being the creative mind and just always into some bullshit. That's that's old Croft dog. I had the song called "Yo Dick." Yo Dick can get you like it could get you in trouble. Is basically what I was saying. So it'll get you like Yo Dick has a head and it has a mind of its own in that little head. So. <laughs> I went to the to the uh, to the porn store, and we used to do shows, and we'll come out, and I'll do this song, Yo Dick, and I had like, it had to be like a goddamn eighteen inch yes whammy and a thick motherfucker. Yeah, it was a little bit bigger than mine. Just yeah, a little just bit. a little bit. So that motherfucker was like that, like a whammy, right? So I used to come out, Yo Dick, with the show, like bouncing on the shows, jumping around. Yeah. I used to look at some of the girls' faces because I tried to match it to my skin color. You know, I'm one of them like Creole <laughs> little light skin niggas. You know, yeah. I tried to match it to my skin color, so they were really thick as my joints. I had it out of my pants, so I'd come around, Yo Dick, can get you a gang of fine hoes. hoes. I'm around, get you. And so they was like looking. I seen the girls' eyes. They was like, Oh shit, this motherfucker came out. Pull that is dick. This little motherfucker with a big old. I'm like, No, nah, yeah. this big. I'm sorry, this ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be sad. But no, it now, ain't okay, crazy. now here, here's the crazy part. Jim Morrison in Miami, Florida, I believe it was Miami, Florida, it, it was rumored that he pulled out his dick and from the doors and he got arrested. They, they actually put that in the movie. Damn. You came out with, yo, dick uh -huh. can get you a yeah, gang of fine hoes, whatever. And you pulled out with yeah, the big ass 18 inches. Yeah. I remember when we did shows and there were certain girls with their hands up with their mouths open. Yeah, just want that dick. Yes. Yeah, they want that dick. They want that D. They want that dick. Yeah, D. They love Remember? that dick. Where yeah. to the D, y'all? Where to the D, y'all? Oh man, okay. They was on that dick. And that was a one verse song. Mm -hmm. Name me another one verse song. One verse off oh, our shit? No, no, I said it. No, I no, I don't know. No, yeah, one exactly. Verse song. One verse song. We had a two verse song and three verse song. Yep. Okay. We was we was like we was stretching out, man, and just the creativity level, and just to me the beauty of like putting together. I know, don't get me wrong, like, technology is everything, man. Like, when right. I did the song with E-40, right. uh, Talk That Talk, it's like, Boogie, I sent E-40 the shit, he sent it back, and E-40, like, 
tore shit up. He ran us off the track like Sly Boogie held his own. But I'm talking about like 40 and Boogie part was the favorite parts to me. But it's like technology where you send it, send it right. back or whatever. But the beauty of recording back then, it was like like you had to have a dude pull up to your studio and come in and do the shit yeah. and leave. And it was like, hey, you could hear the... The tape player rewinding. It wasn't no like, hey, I'm gonna send you this beat. Are we doing this shit like you said uh, on a computer yes. or whatever? Not knocking that because technology, right. we all got to move in advance or whatever. But it was just some good times having like Robert Bacon as a guitar yes. player come in or certain people come because in. you get the vibe. You get the vibe, man. And you say, hey, we. It's been, I forgot who I was talking to about this, but one of the fellas like, we always gave each other lines like. Uh, Tornado. I'll go, we'll go to tornado. I don't know, shit, nigga, tomato or something like, you know, like right, we always, right. we'll help each other out. We'll be like, no, I don't think that's not, nigga, that shit's whack. Don't, don't say it like this, you know. Right. And that was like the beauty of like recording back then. Yeah. And I just think some of that is getting lost with the, let me send you a track. You do I know, shit and come I back. know, I know. And don't get me wrong, like, I, I fuck with like a lot. I ain't gonna say it too much, but I fuck with some of the new shit. That that's coming out because I'm really starting to open my ears to it and accept what it is. You know? I'm trying to, Croft. Yeah, I'm. It took me a while though, but I'm like, I'm fucking with some of the shit. Like I really, you, you you know, okay. I'm gonna give him his props because I believe he deserves them, and not too many people brag about him. And I'm gonna say, and I know you touched on it, AMG's production. Oh yeah, AMG oh, yeah. when he was producing the Fixers album, oh, yeah. and he did. Uh, can you work with that? AMG was ahead of his fucking time, yeah. and he still is. Yeah. He, he still is, you know. A, 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 a lot of times what fucks us up and why we step back a little bit is the business side of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it isn't hip-hop. It isn't the four elements. It's the business side of it yeah. that we just say, you know what, fuck that. I ain't getting yeah. paid. Motherfuckers are jacking me. Jacking and, your shit and not giving you your props. And yeah. Really, you feel underappreciated. That's what it is. Undervalued. And it's like, I'm going to bust my ass to do all of this shit now. And right. then somebody just gonna say, "Oh, he didn't say this," or "Oh, fuck that shit," or that's right. Like, and to me, that's like when you make an album. Just in my opinion, this right. is just me. Right. Now, I'm not speaking saying Tony A said. This is just me saying. To me, I, I call him like a child or a ch like a, a kid. Right. It's like you put this shit out, and I could be dead and gone. I could pass on, but. You could always take the high C Tony A album and put it on and it's like you can live again. Yeah. So I say when you leave something like that, to me it's important. And I used to tell dudes like, man, don't think about trying to make seventeen albums. Like, nigga, make one good motherfucking one. album. And then make the next good album. Then yeah. make the third good album. You don't need to make you don't need to flood it. Cause like And that's what happened today. Yeah, it's just like, oh, we just want to keep ah, single, ah. single, 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 single. None of the shit, like to me. No, nah, I ain't going to say none. Let me rephrase it. Most of the shit don't have that lasting, like, yes. oh, I remember that. That like, lasting impression. That, you know, that shit. Like, when you hear, like, right. like you just said, when you hear Boys in the Hood, or when you hear, oh, yeah, this this number two. Number two. Number Fuck. Two. I'm going to be in trouble. Number two. Boss. That's okay. Tomorrow I got legs. Yeah. So. Oh, shit. So. No, but what I'm saying is, like, you know, you just want to make... Lasting impressions, bro. Like when you hear shit like that, like certain songs, like man, you can hear, uh, like for instance, MC Breed ain't no future in your front. Rest when in peace. When that shit come on, like you gonna move. Rest in peace, brother. Yeah, yes. that's, that was my dude, man. Breed took the shirt off his back in the daytime, and he was out on tour and gave it to me, and we I gave him one of my shirts. Like that was my guy. Like and Breed didn't understand when uh, <laughs> he said, "Ain't no future in the front." Never was, cuz. Yes. Okay, I got a story Reed, about that. I got a story about that. Go ahead. He's from Flint, Michigan. So back yeah. then, he didn't really know what that meant. Cuz, which meant cousin, pretty cousin, much. Yeah, cousin. Like that's what they say. And then a lot of dudes from the Bay, they say blood. You know, like hey, blood. Like young blood, they don't be meaning like yeah, young blood shit. doesn't just means like like what a brother. Yeah, yeah, type like, of. What up, brother? yeah. It's just a certain way they talk. And he was like, man, I didn't understand that shit. Crawl. Like, what the fuck? I said, yeah, man, that's just, just our culture and shit, yeah. L.A. culture. And it's crazy now that our culture has spread out yeah. to, like, the East Coast and mm -hmm. just all over the world. And I'm not saying that's a good thing, but it's just, like, the influence that we have on people. And people got to understand, bro, this shit is real. You can't get out there and play with certain shit or right. just do certain shit because they got guys that really – it's not right, but they dedicate their life to this shit. Like this is what they know. They don't know nothing else, but like I'm a I'm 
this I'm active, I'm a banger, I go hard. I, right. You know, and you got dudes that do that shit for real. Right. You got these dudes that's kind of playing or trying to clout chase or trying to do something to just get some little attention. And, bro, you might get the wrong attention. So, whole another story. You might get the wrong attention, yeah. yeah. But but I remember, okay, I moved out of Compton. Well, I didn't have no choice. My family was out of Compton when I was nine years old. And I remember, uh, and back then everybody was a brother. When we say bro, mm -hmm. it's like brother. Yeah. Okay. Like, what, yeah. what up, bro? Like, what that's my bro, right? That's yeah. my, brother. my brother. Okay. And like what you said, I'm glad you brought that up when we say, what's up? What up, blood? Yeah. It didn't mean like, what up, blood? Yeah. It, it meant like, yeah. what up? Almost like saying, what up, bro? What up? Yeah. You know, yeah. It, things just changed over the years. Yeah. And, and I'm glad that we got to live through it and are, we're still alive to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Because look, Croft, how many people do we know that probably Man. got killed over Dayton's yeah. or killed somebody over Dayton's? Over and, colors, over yeah, all kinds of crazy shit, bro. You know what's crazy? A couple, about a year ago, I went to the, uh, right here, pick your part. Okay, yeah. uh, I, I believe it was about yeah, a year okay, ago. Cute. Yeah, yeah, and I saw Dayton's there. Yeah, Dayton's there, and then uh, uh, they were kind of beat up, but there were some silver ones. Yeah. Okay, and I asked the guy how much. He goes, Ah, give me three hundred. God. Damn. Okay, now think about this, <laughs> three hundred. Yeah, and there's guys right now doing life. Yeah, because they killed somebody Kill over Dayton's. Somebody over that shit. Yeah, and all of that, the reason why we're because all of that was going on during the time that we were producing our shit. Yeah. You know, so, okay, back to, we did Yo Dick, two at a time, Froggy Style, mm -hmm. Compton Hoochies. Oh, man. There's a lot of people that love Compton Hoochies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, were you inspired by Compton I Hoochies? Always, I always had a, a big influence, like, on listening to Yellow Man. Yes, yeah. yes. Especially, what was that song? No, remember, if he should lose me, yeah, yeah. you lose a good lose thing. Good. Yeah, he, Yellow Man was my guy. Yes. Man, this is, still is my guy, not saying was, but like certain reggae stuff and just uh, with my household, man, you know, island, uh, my wife uh, from the islands and shit, so uh -huh. they, had a, they played a lot of songs that I never heard before. Right. And um, it was like a big influence, like to listen to some of the stuff that, they was doing and then mm -hmm. I was like, man, I'll incorporate like some of the shit. Right. Like, you know, even some of like the other homies heard some of the stuff and did was like, okay, cool. So I just kind of wanted to touch on that because I was always into like, I just love. What, what, what was the hook? S some good, some young, some fat or some dumb or some shit. Uh, you were, yeah. Do you remember? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said some dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I, but that's what it was, bro. It was like, just doing what you like and stretching out and being open to right. all the different shit, bro. And I, I'm going to be real with you, bro. I was the type of motherfucker back then. I would listen to uh, Peter Gabriel. I would listen to Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer. Of course. And I was like, but I wouldn't tell the homies that because when I come out of the house, nigga, I got on the eight ball. Dope, man. Dope, man. Right. But when I get into the house and shit, I'm listening to... Uh, Shock come the come monkey. Come, 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 come. <laughs> <laughs> Culture club. Yeah, I'm listening to Boy George with his shit. I didn't know, you know, my I didn't I didn't know what was going on back then. I right. had to learn what his preference was, but to me it didn't matter because I like the music. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't I don't care about what you as long as you stay in your lane with your shit, I'm cool, I'm in my lane. I don't have no type of problems with nobody. You know what I'm saying? So right. I just listen to a lot of shit, bro. And it's like to me, it seemed like almost like we was about to I don't want to I don't want to make it sound fucked up, but we was about to lose like the whole shit when MTV came out, they had all the like you know the, the uh, George Michael shit, the shout, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm talking uh, to you, yeah, come tearful on. fears, like, all the tears, like all that shit was taken over, man. And then to me, the savior, the young savior, once again was Michael Jackson when he came out with that Thriller and did that shit. Yeah, and he was doing a, that motherfucker moonwalk, and he got that shit back to like us as our code, like the black and brown, yeah. You know, because that shit was going like, hey, it was about to... It was all going Europe. Yeah, it was about to take... I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? It, and the, I ain't gonna lie, some of that shit was like, fly, like... Right. Well, I, you know what they called uh, it? The European invasion. Yeah. Duran Duran. The, uh, uh, my favorite shit is... Uh, so, uh, Wanted to be a oh, 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 your remix, uh, 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 Sweet Dreams. World. Yeah, Sweet Dreams. All that shit, bro, was like, that was my shit. Of course. But when I came out the house, nigga, I was like, nigga, dope, man, dope, dope man. man. Boys. But when I get in the house, I'm like dancing around. Because you got the half face. <laughs> I was just telling you the real. It's a statue of limitations. Uh, and it's only like between it, us. Fuck Anybody watching? you. So. 
Try me, nigga. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, Two more songs that stand out to me. Uh, too Drunk to Fuck. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been too drunk to fuck? Hell, yeah. Okay. Like with your weenie, well, it's like shit. a gummy worm. It, it won't it's get hard. Like, yeah, it's like, man. Like, I'm tapping out. Yeah, it's like, it don't even know what the fuck. And it's like, ah. <laughs> and you wake up and you don't know what the hell going on. Okay, another one. Last one. Punk shit. Yeah, that was kind of like... That was kind of like a... Uh, Give it to us in a nutshell. What were you at? I was... <laughs> <laughs> I had this dude, man. This motherfucker... I'm talking about like if he wasn't like Hulk Hogan or Lou Ferrigno or the Hulk, he was like the next thing next to it. This motherfucker had like the biggest arms, a big bodybuilder motherfucker, and he sold tapes in his swap meet in a particular part of town where we was supposed to be. Of course. So of course. back then, you know, it's all territorial shit for people that don't know. It's like LA is just it's so many different sets crammed into LA. It'll make your head spin. You can't even right. name all of them because you're going to offend somebody and they're going to be like, oh, nigga, you forgot about my shit, nigga. Right. Uh, nigga, we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I got a relationship with dude and he was like, man, I want some of the fucking, the tapes, the mixtapes or whatever. Right. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get up early because I think when I get up early, I'm going to beat the riffraff. These niggas ain't going to be out. These niggas is bangers. They hang out late. They niggas ain't getting up early. Right. And boy, was I wrong. <laughs> I got up early. And they got up early. They was up earlier. <laughs> earlier. No, fuck. You know, they was earlier than me. So went into the swap meet. I went to go see the dude. I handed the nigga the tapes or whatever. He was like going to look out for me, give me some money or whatever. So I get into the thing and I'm looking. I'm like... Oh shit! You know, you know, you can tell when some shit is crazy. I see a dude looking. He go back. I'm like, oh shit! I'm like, fuck! He go back, and then another dude. He come back. Two or three more dudes. They look. They dip back off. You know, they don't want to give it. They don't want to just expose it right quick. Right, right. They want to let you get comfortable so they can try to do whatever they doing. So I'm talking to dude. I'm like, man, damn. And so these niggas just ganged up. Then it was probably about five or six of them. And I'm at the stand, at the music stand, trying right. to get this dude this shit. And the shit that made me feel the worst, where I felt it in the pit of my stomach, Tom, you know what it was? What's that? The armed security guard, this motherfucker got a six-shooter. He's scared of the niggas that's in the, in the, in the swap meet because that's their hood. So he oh. ain't, fuck your gun. Like, nigga, you in my hood. We letting the security guards, that's how, you know how LA is. Like, right. we regulate our hood. We don't give a fuck if you security, police, right. whatever. So when I seen the security guard, he came and he saw the dude surrounding me. The security guard went like this, bro. I never forget that shit. I looked at him. I made eye contact just like that. The security guard came. He looked at me and he went backwards and ducked off and left me hanging. Damn. I said, God damn, this shit about to get ugly. <laughs> so the dude was like, man, where are you from? This and that. He was pressing me. So all of them just started getting around me. One of them just tried to hit my pocket. So I grabbed his hand like this. And he was like, nigga, get off me of this and this and that. And it was a big one came be behind me and put me like in a chokehold. And I was like getting back from him like this. And the littlest one, I'm like, I will knock his ass. I will beat his <laughs> ass. But that motherfucker came up like this. He grabbed my chain and he went like this, pulled up his shirt. He had a burner on a gun. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. I'm like, nigga, I guess this your chain in. Right. Or whatever. So they started wrestling over the money and shit. They was broke, whatever. Took the money, started running. So the dude, the big motherfucker, didn't help me. I'm bringing him the tapes. His big sorry ass motherfucker. Big. I'm talking about arms big as them motherfucking light like this. Hulk Hogan big. Like you lifting all these weights for what, nigga? You didn't help me do shit. They over here jumping me. Right. You looking like oh. And he had no he heart. Don't come and help me. Like man, get up, go to the car. I'm like get your big <laughs> sorry ass off of me, nigga. Right. So right. they was fighting over the little money I had in my pocket or whatever. So. I went back to the car, and so a couple of the homies I called. You know how the shit go. Call of course. the homies, and we were just circling, circling. I'm glad the shit didn't go how it's supposed to go. Cause right. I was. I one thing about me, Tom. You know, Jim and I. I'm a right. Cool as fuck, but I don't have no middle. I'm cool. Right. Where I'm turned green. Right. And I right. turn green, so I'm riding around. I'm talking about burners loaded up. Homies calling, and we were just waiting. I guess they knew what was up because they never did come out. 
Right, right. But I probably would have been, like you said, doing some life type of shit. I know. I, and you know what? I remember you got to the studio. You, yo, Tom, play that beat real quick. I'm going to write this shit because this is some punk shit. And I was like, all right. And before you told me the story, you rapped it. And I was like, hey, did that shit really happen? Yeah, that shit really happened, motherfucker. And I was like, don't get mad at me. I'm just asking. <laughs> like, yeah, I was, I was, I was oh, man. No, you were hot that day. I, I swear, I, I, I promise that's one of the times where God, I thank God that I didn't see Man, I just kept riding, riding around, riding around, riding around, riding around. I'm like, I'm going to see one of these motherfuckers. And I had, like, some shit. Yeah. I had more. I had a couple of the homies. We, you had, had some ramble dirty, shit. Huh? Yeah. Some ram Dirty Harry. I had some shit that it was, it was going to go. It was do gonna you feel up. lucky, punk? Huh? What do you? And I'm glad, bro. It's like, God, that's. Right. Man, I believe in the higher power. Yes. Yes, sir. Yep. You know what, 30 years ago, man, I'm thankful that this came out. I'm thankful that we're celebrating today. You know what's funny? Right here, they put, uh, I'm not your puppet, and leave my crows alone. See that little sticker right yeah, there? Yeah, So we still have that. I don't know if you still see the, the back of the yeah. our pictures. Well, we took that shit. Uh, yeah. And you know kind of like downtown. And yeah, and I still remember the uh, photographer's name, Susan Warner. Susan Warner, if you're still out there, thank you for this. And Steve Yano, once again, uh, thank you. Uh, Susan Yano and you know what and I'm like a puppet video uh, Sherry was there Sherry's uh, Steve Yano's daughter yeah, 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 yeah. she graduated from USC became a lawyer that's dope and now she lives what in what time attorney because we need her yeah we, we need her so, uh, uh, probably criminal hopefully criminal but she lives in, in um, uh, San Francisco Sherry call your, your black uncle call yeah. your black uncle Sherry exactly he, uh, he'll buy you some Call Tone uh, uh, Hit no, Tone Instagram Yeah yeah Instagram shit Tone shoot this shot Man you I see what you did bro Give me that shit man No I You, man, you put my shit All the way up to the I top I sipped on it Bro it's I, a shot you don't Sherry uh, uh, Buy him some Cafilta ca fish One and, more. Or, or, or some camel hump For the 30 So Fuck Yes Okay one more We're gonna take one more after this. And I swear to God I'm probably not gonna wake up tomorrow so these are <laughs> these are the last days, and I, and I'm out of here, <laughs> and yeah, I'm out of yeah. here. But you know what? Uh, fuck! What the fuck was I gonna say? Um, what were you talking that, about? That's that shit. <laughs> you talking about Sherry and the, uh, and the thing? No, 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 I know another baby before that. Um, fuck! All right, look, Rob, I'm filling that motherfucker up. <laughs> Give me yours. Give me yours. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, everybody, once again. Okay, you want to play rough? Yes, exactly. Okay. And I already know I'm not going to feel this shit right now, but after, if you guys see me cross-sided in pictures, it's all because of him. <laughs> okay, we're fucking done. So, me and him killed that whole fucking bottle. It's the 30th, huh? We need another bottle, right? Y'all think, right? Three bottles. Fuck you. <laughs> 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 you like hell no you like hey time out you time out bro you know what this album cover right here I don't give a fuck what anybody says. this album cover is classic and you know it why is, 30 years 30 years and it still shows unity between black and brown yeah, yeah, you know so that's it's what I want to say too much similarity that's where I got all my sweat like we learned like I grew yeah. up like, I, I was like the first yeah. black to accept everything bro yeah uh, um, I want to look at my I, not to change the subject, but look at my kicks, man. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what you, what you're sporting. Patrick Ewings. Patrick Ewings. The thirty threes, because you know we was on some Chuck shit back then. Yes. I had all kind of Chucks, or whatever. Yeah. But I was like something about them Patrick Ewings, man, that I love. I, I, like, I, well, I saw you with them first, and that's when I picked them up. And yeah. I what you get them from Compton Indoor? So yeah. I went over there. My son, yeah. my first son, Brian. Yeah. I got him some Patrick Ewings. Man, that's I want what I did. New ones just to bring it back. Yeah, some Ewings. Uh, uh, those were some kicks. That mm -hmm. to me, to me, that was. I'm just. I don't want to disrespect nobody, but to me, wearing some Ewings were were better than wearing Jordans because not everybody was wearing those. Yeah, exactly. It was kind of like different. Everybody yeah. was on the Jordan. Uh, even Cube said in a song, "Put on my white Ewings." Yeah. You know. So I had some Nike Cortez, but I'm going to say this. I'm going to give a shout out to my boy, Angel, Angel Montes. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, boy, for Angel. Los Tres and I finally did. Yes, exactly. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to give a shout out to him. Because when we shot this album cover, we hadn't gotten our first check yet. Okay. I, I remember you got that from Hollywood Records. Yeah. That shirt. Because yeah. it had a wolf they on it. They gave us everything. Yes. Bro, I got the watch. The wa shit. I still got the watch. Yeah, they okay. got me from a watch. They broke in my car and shit. No shit? Yeah, back then. I still got mine, but it doesn't That's work. But up. Okay. 
I hadn't gotten any money yet, and I went across the street and I talked to my boy Angel. Hey, I got a photo shoot tomorrow. Oh yeah, uh, can I borrow some pants and some uh, a shirt? Yeah, okay. Those Ben Davis belong to my boy Angel. That That's white dope. T-shirt I belonged to my that. boy. It did. Yeah, and this little uh, looking like Pendleton mm -hmm. was my boy's. And I said, I just, I just, I haven't gotten paid yet. Oh, okay, That's cool. Great. I never knew that. Bro. Yeah, bro. So I, I had Angel, a borrow shirt. Guy, man. His yeah. son used to play football. You know, I coached football yeah. for like 14 years. Yeah. And As a matter of fact, my son played against your son, remember? Exactly. Brian? No, your son was always older than my son, so it was the team above it. Okay. So Brian was younger than Lil Croft, so Lil Croft played under him. But right. we played against, what's the little fast running back y'all had? Number five. Number five. Uh, uh, no, no, no. He was older than us. That's one. But the other little, I think he was number two. Yeah, yeah, number two. Number he, two, uh, that um, that's who my son battled. But number okay. five was that shit. Yes. He, that little motherfucker was, uh. We went to four championships, two nationals with yeah, that dude. Yeah, that motherfucker was bad. Okay, number oh, that two. That was the dude on your team, right? Yes. Number five. Okay, let me give. Josh or something. Yes, Joshua, Limo Fnero. Okay, but let me give a shout out to number two. God. I can't think of his name. No, no. Bro, but that's who my son played against. Bro, if you're watching, I'm going to give you a shout out right now. We beat them like in a close game yes. right over here on a, on a. Number two still comes by and hangs out with me. No okay, shit. his name is Jaime. Jaime owns a record label called Know Thyself, and he's got artists that I've interviewed here. Yeah, so, cool. Jaime, he's talking about you, number two. Yeah. Hit us. Yes, bro. I had to pull out all my bag of tricks to stop. <laughs> but That's every time I used to see Snoop, man, he'd be like, "Man, how I see, man, bring your kids to the Snoop League." And I'm like, "Snoop, man, I hear you, man. I want to, but man, my little kids from the South Bay area, right, 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 <laughs> they right, get over there and get culture shock. Them motherfuckers so nice and cool. Like they, yeah, they ain't used to that 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 grind and greedy. C Croft, you know, for people people that may not know, um, you don't have any type of social media nah. like okay I, I i need to make this clear mm -hmm. no instagram no instagram. no facebook nope. no twitter nope. no myspace no no tinder nope. no no black uh, planet no black planet or no plenty of fish no jerk off in the box yeah none, none, of, none that. of that okay so if somebody follows you or comments it's high seat it's not him it's it's a fake motherfucker it's a fake yeah there you go it's a fake. It's so, a fake. So he has no. Now, can I ask you why you choose to live outside of social media? I just feel like, honestly, in my opinion, it's like not that I'm hiding anything or doing nothing like that. I love social media for like the positivity. Right. The help. Like if somebody's going through something, if it's a natural disaster. Or the promotion or any, shit. Promotion or shit, like the good stuff. But what what really just fucks me up, bro, and I really hate uh -huh. is the motherfuckers that got the can of man or the courage, and they like the hardest motherfuckers on Instagram, and they talk shit, but they never come out the house. Yeah, you never got access to them. You never got action that they never pop out, and right. they the toughest motherfucker. Oh fuck you! They fuck everybody. Fuck the, like the I net bangers. Yeah, net the bangers. Net bangers. And so it's like, bro, you can't really. Like, I hate that shit, bro, because what it does is it fucks up the, the youngsters because when they do see you, right now it's like, man, I got one chance to get this motherfucker, and they might go too hard or overdo it, and you end up getting innocent people fucked up, or it's just crossing people up. People get messy, and people lie on you or whatever. So back in the day, we used to get out of school at 315, and we used to get into it at school. Right. And guess what I say? Like... The nigga say, oh, nigga, 315. Mm -hmm. I say, nigga, 315 then. And you know what that mean? After we school. know what it mean. 315 mean after school. Yeah. Nigga, 315. Nigga, fuck you. 315. Nigga, I ain't scared. And we had to handle that shit. We handle it. Whoever lose, win, whatever. If it had to be round two, 315, round right. two. But it was squat. It was over with. Yeah. So what I'm saying is sometimes people get on the, in, on the social media thing and it's for all the wrong reasons. And they doing all the bullshit, and I hate that I know, motherfuckers bro. be doing shit or or slighting or or like they call it trolling. Right. And to me, I, that's just not in my heart, bro. I never I know. been a, a troll. I don't like that kind of shit, Tom. That's that shit I hurts know. me, bro. So you talking shit, 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 talking shit, shit. What have you done, bro? Yeah. To be voicing your opinion, it gives everybody a voice or an opinion to me, and sometimes they give it to the wrong people. Right. So that's my reason why I don't really rock with it like that. I just don't like that kind right, of shit. Right, right. 
If you if you say some shit, you should be able to own up to it. Like you asked me why I don't like it, and I gave you my reason. If some people say, "Oh fuck, Drake new album," why are you saying "fuck Drake new album"? This dude worked hard on this shit. Right. Like no, don't fuck Drake new album. Listen to it. See where he coming from. But a motherfucker say, "Oh fuck the new," you know. Right. It's like, bro, like fuck you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something, and uh, I'm I'm gonna ask for a pass on this one. Mm-hmm. Because a white man said it, so that's why I'm, I'm asking for a pass on this one. Because I, I don't talk, I don't say the N word, but I'm going to say it because I know you'll remember. And this is how I know. And Crop was probably when I say Crop, I'm talking about Heisey. He was probably about 19 or 20 years old. We were LAX, oh shit, flying oh, to shit. San Diego. Okay, and we had a representative from Hollywood Records, which is Disney. Yeah, and we were sitting waiting for our fucking flight. Yeah. And a fucking white man mm-hmm. with a fucking European accent. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting right next to him, and he turns around, looks at Croft, high scene, and he goes, fucking nigger. And you got up <laughs> and knocked him the fuck out <laughs> at the airport. Be, yeah. See, I'm a good guy. I'm a, but, but that's what he said. That he did. I remember that. You shit. were like, ping, ping. And I got up, ping, boom, yeah. ping. The rem- what are you guys doing? Yeah. We got kicked off our flight. Oh, we got damn, kicked off bro. our flight, and then we had to catch a fucking Richie Valens, rest in peace, it La Bamba like flight. A, a plane that was motherfucking bro. It. The plane was crib walking. Right? They, that like, motherfucker. Yeah. We was we, like, we gonna die. Nigga. We had no no seat belt. It was rope. <laughs> that motherfucker. But no, the dude, man, it was just some disrespectful. I'm like, what the fuck? He didn't even he know you. He just said yeah, that. He just came by. He was like one of those guys with his... Fancy ostrich boots and it, like you said, Tom said that you know you could tell he had money, whatever, right? Rolex and shit. And he was like, "Fucking niggers," and I'm like, you know, the dog when the ears go, "Hmm," huh? and I just Zoics? said, <laughs> and that motherfucker hit the ground. He hit the ground, bro. He was out on one. Like I ain't trying to brag, but it was like you know, you know, you know no motherfucker. That motherfucking punch bah! came all the way from Compton, like bang. Yeah. You know, knocked him out, blood everywhere on the ground. Tone came in, gave him a couple of little, yeah, take that, take that, take that, take that, take that. <laughs> and Bundy, Big Bundy, rest in peace. Oh, Big Bundy, rest Bundy, in peace. Yeah, oh, that you didn't want to see Bundy. That motherfucker like six five. Yeah, three big ass motherfucker, seventy two pounds. Big. I'm talking about King Kong Bundy. He was really that guy and was right. on his ass. And then after we told the, the flight people what happened. They really didn't call the police. We didn't get arrested, mm-hmm. but they made us leave. We can fly on the airline. I don't know if it was Delta, but we had to go to another airline. But we was experiencing racism right back then. Exactly. Like, but I know one thing: that motherfucker won't come back to L.A. Yeah. and be talking about some nigga shit because the old crop dog. <laughs> crop dog. So now you understand what that atomic dog breathing means. <laughs> so, anyways, oh, yo, really quick. Jessica Carrillo, will High C be at Oaks Park again for Xmas this year? Oaks Park. She dropped five dollars on the live chat. Oh if shit! You, Give you, me five. I'm gonna put something yeah. else on that money. I'll yeah. fly out it, there. Yeah. If anybody want, uh, um, send me some your send business. Me to my cash app. Yeah, exactly. Anybody want any business uh, promotion? Drop some money. But will High C be at Oaks Park again? She talking about or, Oaks Park. She talking about Sacramento. That sound like that's what she said. Oak Park. Oak, Oak Park. Oak Oaks. Oaks Park. Park. Is that Oak. Sac? And she in Sac? Yo, Jessica, are you in Sacramento? I'm assuming so. Because that's, you know, we didn't travel. You know, we know this right. motherfucker up and down. Tom. Hey, to the 30, man. It's the three. We made it. The three. Fuck. Oh. I'm in trouble. Oh. I'm in. Eo de la chingada. I'm in fucking trouble. I'm not going to fucking lie. <laughs> if I don't wake up tomorrow. Que Dios los bendiga. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and I still got a drink. I'm sorry. I know, me too. Shit. Uh, Oak Park Mall. Where's Oak Park Mall? Oak Park, that's Sac. Okay, well, yeah. Sacramento. That's Tell her, give me a ticket. I'll come out there. He said, get him a ticket. He'll give me a goddamn there. ticket, girl. And you know what's dope? We're fucking both wearing white tees. Huh. That's, hey, that was the shit, though. That white was the tea? uniform. You can, when you get dressed... 
you go to the Swami back then and get you a white tee. That was like almost like a button down for us and shit. Yeah, like like, like a, a polo, what you're wearing like right now, huh? Yeah, my little polo, you know, I got Bro, a polo drip. Oh, Jessica Carrillo, no, in Compton, and she straight dropped another five dollars. Oh shit, Oaks. And I said, I could, that's gas money. That's in the city. Yeah. I can I can make it to Compton on five dollars. She said, "Are you going to be there?" This you know. She talking about the giveaway. The yeah, toy drive. I guess. Shit. Yeah. I don't know. We might have to come out there, man. I got to see what's going okay. on. Okay. There's been some things kind of different with the politics out there, so okay. I don't know what's going on. But we like to come out there and give you know the toy drive or whatever. So I'm still tell her to be determined. Okay. Okay. TBD to be determined. To be determined. She talking about the toy drive. Who the hell is that? Okay, anyways, yeah, the toy <laughs> drive. But uh, let me see what else. Anything else, Croft, that we didn't bring up, that we should bring up, that we should talk about? Tell me. Um, Anything. Because you know what? I mean, this is our time right now, brother. No, what, what man, it's just, to me, like, Tone, like, just, just going through all the shit with the pandemic, all yeah. the loved ones that passed away. Just to me, man, don't take this shit for granted. Like, I know. We not I know. promise tomorrow. Like, my dude, that boy shit banging over there, boy. You got some shit on the line. You about to go tear something up. Nah, you know I mean? Yeah, no, but don't take this shit for granted, bro. Like, to me, reach out to your people. Yeah. Talk to your people. Your loved ones, bro. Your loved ones, mm -hmm. man, family. Like, shit is weird, bro. Like, I talk, it's, it's two dudes in particular, man. My boy, Big Chip. My boy BB from the neighborhood, and it's like I talk to these dudes, man. I'm, I'm, Chip was like my dude, still stayed in Compton or whatever. Talked to him like two or three days. He was like, "Croft, I feel sick, man. I don't, I don't know what's up." But he said, "Man, I'm gonna get with you." He said, "Man, pull up." And yeah. He said, I'll just go. He stayed on Magnolia. I'll go over there, and pull up. Like we still go to, you know. It's like right. Shit, it's. The hood, like we we know our shit, right. so pull up or whatever, man. I, I'm like he. I didn't hear from him after the two or three days. So I was right. like, okay, maybe he's not feeling good or whatever. He'll hit me when he's feeling better. I started getting a call from another homie, and was like, man, so, that like that never call. You know how you get that call from right. a dude that never hit you up, but then he blowing you up. Right. And it's like, man, let me answer this. And he was like, bro. My boy Chip passed away, so I'm like, what the f I said, this can't be real. It was like, put me in shock. Like, right. Man, like, I just talked to him, and he just told me to pull up. We were supposed to talk or whatever. You know, like, the shit was just, it just went. Right. Right. Like that, bro. My boy BB. Sorry we to hear that, talking about bro. some shit. Yeah, I appreciate it. My boy BB, it he, um, he was, like, we was talking about some shit about the internet shit and social media and this and that. And a couple of the homies, we was all on the party line talking and shit. We was talking about how, once again, that's the dude that introduced me to. I wouldn't have probably met you if it wasn't for BB. Right. Right. Which is Gary. Yeah, that took you to the that rodeo. That took me to the rodeo to get a job. Because I've never been the lazy nigga. I always wanted to work and make a couple of dollars or whatever. Right. Talk to him. And then the next week, they was like, man, BB, gone. I'm like, no, nah, that can't be true. I just talked to him. We was talking about social media. Like, cool, everything. And it was like, no, nah, COVID. Got him. So to me, it's just, I just want to reiterate, like, bro, if you got something going on or if it's something that could be smoothed over, right? like, reach out to your people, talk to them, right. man, appreciate them. This shit is not promised. It's some weird shit going on, bro. It's a weird time, man. Yeah. And it's like, you just got to really appreciate your dudes, man. Yeah. Another dude I had was, um, I coached football for like 14 years. I coached different generations. Coach my son, different generations. I, I remember my dude Sione. He was uh twenty one, I think at the time twenty one, twenty two. They shot him down in the streets. He got two kids, little kids, and they was like super small or whatever. Right. And uh, went to his funeral. Went to went to his funeral, bro. And he had like the um, his his people had put like kind of like the life-size posters of him. And um, he had pictures of him, like, you know, in his good times of smiling or whatever. And I coached him since he was little, coached him right, up, coached right. him up or whatever. And like my little dude, he was one of those type of dudes where I say, hey, Sione. Right. He was he was tonguing. 
And I said, hey, go get the ball from this dude or just knock the shit out of this other kid. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like he was like my right. little assassin, my hitter. So he got gunned down, bro. And it's like, it, it fucked with me so bad. I went to his funeral. I went to three funerals, BB, Gary, my boy Chubbs. You know Chubbs, Ramsey. Yeah. His mom passed away. And wow. Sione Tukatau, he, he passed away. Three funerals in four days. And it just made me, it just... It fucked with my it soul. It fucked you bro. up, yeah, bro. So I watched, I went to his funeral. He had a life-size poster, Tom, of him, like, smiling when he was doing good. His little kid kept going up to the poster. Guess what the little kid was saying? Dada, touching the poster. Dada. And I saw it again. Next thing you know, I couldn't, I don't know what the hell happened, but I was just crying, bro. I just couldn't hold it. Right. It just messed me up, bro, like, because the little kid don't know right. that they'll never see their dad in that physical form again. Right. But the little kid knew, like, this is dad at 21 years old, bro. Yeah. Life cut short. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, not to make it a be downer on our 30th right. shit. Right. I know. All good. I good. But you, but want, you want to acknowledge it. Acknowledge it, bro. Reach out to the people that you care about or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, and I have to do better, too. Yeah. By reaching out and forgiving people or whatever. So, we all have work to do, in my opinion. Crop, I have a question for you. Somebody asked, can we get a vinyl reissue of the album? If Crawford's down to put our money together and redo it, I'm down. Um, I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because we can put a we can put our own price on a reissue vinyl album. Yeah, let's okay? do it. We could do a meet and greet and sign autographs. I'm with it. So so yeah, so let me give a shout out to my organize that shit. I'm, yeah. I'm there. This guy's name is Satan West. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Satan. If I was just talking about the funerals and the homies. Yeah, but this is Satan. Damn, Satan. Yeah, Satan showed Satan, up. Satan, come on, man. Yeah, Satan God West. Damn, Satan. Yeah, exactly. So somebody else dropped another fine put. Much love. Hi, C. <laughs> uh, from uh, Turtle Linwood and China from Paramount. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, he knows you are Jessica Carrillo. So, other than that, yeah. Man, you know what? If you have any questions, shoot them right now. But make sure you drop some motherfucking money. We ain't cheap bastards. You know, make sure you drop some motherfucking money. Yeah. You got to be fucking worth it. So other than that. Uh, and we uh, did three shots for the 30. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking four. So that, okay, look. Um, where's the Espelon bottle? Somebody be in the Espelon bottle. Okay. Go. Yeah, please. Por favor. R.I.P. to Mossberg. Absolutely. Okay. Man, bro. Hey, I got him in my gym. Like I said, I got AMG. I got Mossberg to shut up, nigga. Yeah. Shut up, nigga. Yeah. Man, Mossberg was cut down. He was murdered way before his time. Yeah. And I was just riding, bro, and I just got fully emotions, and it took everything in me. You know when you had that tear in your eye? Of course. And you don't want to blink. You got to right. kind of hold your head back. Right. I miss Mossberg, man. Johnny yeah. Burns. That, that was like my guy, how, man. How, how old was he, bro? He was in his 20s, bro. Mossberg was like 6'4", 300. He was a big dude, bro. Probably 50 pounds. Uh-huh. Big dude. Could play baseball. Like, almost right. like had scholarships to like anywhere in baseball. Right. Make sure you switch. switch Man, big, that? big dude. Right. And Mossberg was just serious about his music, bro. That's like my, my nigga, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Just a good dude and was just just pushing a line for his, his shit. Croft, I'm gonna take one more shot. Shit, you know I ain't, hey, I ain't turning down no phase, bro. Okay. I ain't never been scared. Okay, so here's my thing: if we don't wake up tomorrow, uh, at least fucking our thirtieth was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I yo, 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 you phase. know what? I I, I got some uh, shot cups over there. If you yeah, they one. gotta have everybody else shoot one. So, with us, man. anyways. <laughs> yeah, um, hey, this is the last one. Shoot it. Everybody got yeah. shoot one. Satan West it. said, "Ask High C if he would do his song with." Mr. D. I don't think he knows who Mr. D is, but I'm sure he would. So as of right now. Goddamn Satan. Yeah, Satan. Satan, Satan, Satan. Exactly. Okay. No, you know what? Get it behind me, Satan. <laughs> so, okay, Crop, let's end it on a happy note. Let's keep it going. Uh, uh, number one, we had AMG call in. We had KK. KK. And then my boy, DJ Mortal from Canada. And DJ Mortal. Yeah, so... Much poutine. love to yeah, so all poutine, poutine not poutang, <laughs> not to be confused with puta. French but anyways, fries with the gravy. 
<laughs> that's poutine. So yeah. So other than that, um, come on, y'all. Don't, hey, don't be over hey, there bullshit, man. Y'all take that to, fucking bottle out of here. Yeah, come on, shoot these shots, man. Why you bullshit? Hey, shout out to JJ, man. He keep my mouth, my see my shit like. JJ keep yeah. my shit, you know. Yeah. Keep me right, Tom. Not my smile like my. You know why? Because he's dynamite. dynamite. <laughs> JJ, man, that's my little bro. Okay. JJ, I'm still missing the tooth, that goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give them big ass shots. Give them doubles. Don't fuck around. Give them doubles. JJ. Fuck these guys. So, <laughs> give them doubles. Oh, you trying okay. to make it to San Diego, homie? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> give them doubles. <laughs> fuck these guys. Oh. So, anyways. We all got to take a shot. The 30. Hey, Tom. Yeah. I love you, bro. Yes. We made it, man. We, You know how we do. We always. I know what's coming next. Go ahead. You know <laughs> And, and I love Tony, bro. Like, me and Tone, we'll sit there and argue about certain shit. I know, I know. We'll get into it. But I can tell you right now, and it's not this shit here, the liquor. I love you, bro. I love you, you too, my, my brother. Dude, bro. Like, we'll, we might not agree on shit sometimes. You right. know how we are. But we always come back because that's how it's supposed to be. Our, our friendship has been over 30 years. All the time. It's And it's... And it's all ongoing is smooth right and it's a couple of little like the water it ripples and it waves or whatever and it's like but it always at the end of the day yeah. is smooth bro oh and i appreciate you that's a, that's a beautiful thing man i appreciate you that's a beautiful thing so uh if i die tomorrow please speak at my funeral <laughs> and only speak on the good things don't speak about the shit that's behind the scenes yeah, yeah me too so other than that uh Crop, anything you else we want to talk about? Anything else we, we didn't mention? Because you know what? Your whole body of work, I mean, because after we stopped, after our second album, you went and did your third album, and then you went on tour quick. You did a lot of stuff. You, I mean, mm -hmm. you have a lot of history. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to point out and let the fans know, like, um, what you might have done, accomplished, where you might have gone? I got so much shit, Tone. It's like, I don't like to, like, I never been the one to brag. But no, yeah, of course. I got, like, shit that people don't know about, and they be like, oh, that's you. Mm -hmm. Like the movie CB4 mm -hmm. with Chris Rock. Yo, hold on. You could lick the sweat from my balls. Sweat from my balls. You could lick the sweat from my balls. All that shit is high C, y'all. That's not Chris Rock. It's not Chris Rock. Chris Rock don't know how to rap. Like, that's all my voice. But I want to ask you, girls, Shout how many of you Rock. have licked the sweat from your man's balls? <laughs> He's the one that brought that shit out. Or that Fumunda cheese. Fumunda. Fumunda. Fumunda okay. your balls. Fumunda. Cheese. Okay. Now, here's my thing. <laughs> When you said on two scanlets, not I don't know if it was I don't know if it was two scanlets or scanlets on the high C song. I'm mean, now quick song. Mm -hmm. I'm about to bust a butt. I'm about to bust a nut on your little baby's head. See, that's what I'm be wanting the kids to hear. Like, God damn. I know man. that. So okay. I was on. I was grimy before. How old were you when you said that shit, bro? I was like 19. Yeah, and you said I'm about to bust a nut on your little baby's yeah, head. Yeah, because that means she was fucking a pregnant girl. A pregnant girl. And this, <laughs> God. Oh my God. Now the reason why I bring that up is because I'm wearing a scandalous hat. Yeah. Because that was scandalous. That well, that's it's. Uh, but do you girls, apologize? No, I don't. Okay. It's, cool. It's like, oh my God. But that was a true story. It yeah. was. It's. It's like just pregnant stuff is just different, bro. That's all I got to say. <laughs> and it's like, oh my God. But I was. We like, could do a froggy style, and then that's when I said. We got to do a Froggy Style song. Yeah. And he said, okay, cool. Yeah. So I found out there's two different positions to do a Froggy Style. I found out. So, But then not mine's. Not, not yours. Mine's is like patented. I called into the city and the state, and I got a patent on like. And Governor Newsom granted yeah, it. It granted it. It's, okay. It's really. So if y'all want. Nah, let me say that. I got to go home tonight. <laughs> We shooting this shot, bro? This is the four? Fuck. This is the finale? Son of a bitch. No, but Tone. Yes, let's do it. Fuck it. Hey, we made it. You in the gym, bro. I'm in the gym. We working out. We keeping our shit together, bro. If you if you guys yes. can pay attention to what you eating, pay attention to what you drinking. Yes. We do this shit right here on occasion. We don't do it every day. Yeah. But... Take care of yourself, bro. Like you will feel good to get your ass up, go run, go do something. Go go run, lift some motherfucking weights. Take care of yourself. Look, man. can I be honest to you guys? 
If you take off your shirt and you got man tits, get in the motherfucking gym. <laughs> hey, bro, speaking of that, look, a, look, trainer, a trainer told me, he told me, and I thought the motherfucker, I was like, ahead. this nigga kind of weird saying this shit. But he said, he said, bro, he said, Croft, if you could take your shirt off, take your clothes off and be asshole naked and look in the mirror and be satisfied, yeah, then you cool. Yes. But he said, if you could look at yourself in the mirror, <laughs> asshole naked, and see the real, he said, you know what you got to fucking do. Get Absolutely. your ass out there and work. And so, yeah. take your ass home tonight or wake up in the morning and strip down butt ass naked. You can leave your hat on, your work yeah, helmet yeah. or whatever. And stand there. And if you, you can feel leave your construction boots on. And stand there. If you like what you see, right on. Right. But if you know that you need to get that motherfucking stomach... And that motherfucking flabby shit, like, go do it, bro. Yeah. Like, go get bro, it. Bro, I, I once saw a meme that said this. I work out to look good naked. That is very fucking true. Yeah. That is very fucking true. If you look good naked, you won. You know me. what my nigga said? Sugar what's Free? That? What's that? Sugar Free said a line, bro. He was fucking with uh, Glasses Malone. Glasses is one of my, look, my nigga, man. My right. little nigga. Glasses Malone, Glass House. Yeah. Solid ass dude. He got a song. Like, I don't know, it's called Bitch Belong to the Streets. Sugar Free said this line in there, it made me laugh. He said, uh, the gym makes you looking makes you look good, but so does tequila. Like, if you're working out in the gym, he said he don't give a fuck. He said, but so does tequila. Like, meaning, like, if he drink tequila oh, yeah. and drink, he look at you, you will look fine. Drink till she's cute. Yeah. Drink, drink look till it. she's cute. Look, you can meet a girl at 300 pounds. But if you're drinking tequila, she looks fine. She fine. looks like Selma Hayek. Yeah. Yeah. Like, your baby, you He said fine. the gym make you, look in, look, make you look good, but so does tequila. Exactly. And I just laughed. That's the sugar-free yeah, classic. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's true. And you know what I liked about sugar-free? He said this. Uh, um, and I'm paraphrasing. Bitch, I don't give a fuck about screenshots. I know what the fuck I said. Yeah. And it's true. That's I love that. That's on Buckle Up. Buckle yeah. Up? Yeah. I know what the fuck I said. Bro, I'm going to tell you, though, just to, not to, to keep the shit going, but... We was in uh, my studio in North, North Hollywood. And mm. I was in North Hollywood. I spent over 10 years. Look, I'm sipping on this motherfucker. I'm going to shoot this shit. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm in a North Hollywood yeah. studio out there or whatever. And quick, we were spending the night or whatever. We aren't doing the shit we do. Right. Quick jump in my shower. And he said he heard. Not while you're taking a shower, right? No, it's by itself. <laughs> I'm on my other side. You know, we. she was big. I'm on my side. I'm on the West Wing. Quick, <laughs> you <a> funny <laughs> Quick on the east wing, he take his shower, and he said he he heard my shower going, choo, 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 choo. like choo, 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 like dripping when you cut it off. You know how shower make noise. Right, right, right. Boo, doo, 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 doo. And he got out the shower, and Quick was like, "Man, I hear this." Choo, choo, choo. He said he heard it in my shower. Blah, 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 blah. He went to my my equipment because I had this studio set up in the um, North Hollywood spot. Bloom, 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 bloom. Get your money while you bullshitting. So I was like, quick! I said, nigga, and I almost fucked this shit up because I was like, nigga, that's another beat for you. You gonna be back on? He put that shit on. And I'm like, God damn, that beat is hard. You know how quick he's just coming right, up with right, some right. shit. So I'm listening to this beat, and I'm like, nigga, that's you. Don't get that shit to nobody. You back on. Just, you know, write your 16 to it, write your verse to it. And he was like, yeah, man. He was like, okay, whatever. So Sugar Free came over. And Sugar Free said, nigga, I could tell you 30 times how to pimp your hoe. I tell you 30 more, you still won't know. You want to overuse the pussy. I'm trying to hit the news with the pussy. I said, man, me and Quick looked at each other like. When he said, nigga. I'm trying to hit the news with the pussy. That, we was like, that's like, it. That's yeah, it. Connie Chung, he's reporting. That's sugar free beat. Yeah, like, fucking we had to give it over. Sugar that's, free hit the news with the pussy. So. That shit, and we never like never looked back, but I was I almost fucked up because I kept trying to convince Quick, like, nigga, this is your next single right here. That yeah, beat yeah, was so yeah. hard because it was like. You yeah. know that he got that, out the shower at that, my that, house. That, hold on, that 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 was a sample from Prince. Mm -hmm. That was sample from Prince. Yep. Prince is my fucking dude, and, and my boy Omar right here, he knows Prince because he went to go visit what, Prince's house or Prince Studio. Prince Park. 
Yeah, yeah. just recently he he went to go take the tour. Yeah. yeah, that's big. So. So, so I know, almost uh, fucked up with some history, like yes. telling quick not to get that beat. I said, bro, don't I remember telling him in my house, don't give that beat to nobody. Oh, the bro, that was a fucking But dope. then when Sugar Free came over there, yeah. And of course. Like, Whoa my God, he murdered that shit. I know. Was like, oh, you know what? I, I, I had Sugar Free uh booked here, but when fucking COVID hit, mm -hmm. I ain't going out. I'm like, all, all good, homie. All, all good. Everybody, that was his fourth fucking shot, and I'm gonna take my fourth. That's some different taste and shit right there. It is. It's some cheaper ghetto shit, but I live in still. I still live in the hood, so it's exception. Yeah. Yeah, I'm making an exception, and we got one minute left. But let me start restart over, and we got thirty minutes left. So, <laughs> okay, um, let's keep it pushing, and we're we're I'm gonna almost have to out take of here. Another big shit in a minute. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not in your tub this time, though, Tom. Croft, you know what's funny, bro? Mm -hmm. And I know people are gonna probably gonna chirp right now, but this is fucking thirty years, bro. Thirty years. Who would have fucking thought that, like? Hey, look, we ain't like no fucked up. Look at us, bro. Let me show my little taco meat on this motherfucker. Exactly. Nigga. We ain't no motherfucking look, boy. Don't get bro, me twisted. We can still go to the oh, gym yeah, and shit. outwork you, motherfuckers. I'll throw us some shit. <laughs> or you can do the lower part. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Bro, let me give a shout. You, you know, I want to give a shout out to my boy Keith Duncan. Yellow, yellow, Ice? yellow eyes. That's my nigga, man. Yellow eyes is the guy that got me where I'm at right now, bro. You know what's the one thing? That's the beautiful thing about him. Everybody knows him, bro. Yeah. Everybody knows solid him. Solid dude. Yeah, solid, straight solid dude. And he's had my back since day one. So much love, much respect to That's Keith. That's funny, man. He was out on the road with us, bro, before I know. we even met him like our dude. And it's, it's it works the way it's supposed to yeah. work when he came into your life and yeah. started training you. And you was telling me, Crawl, I know this yellow. I'm like, yellow eyes? I'm like, remember? Yes, like, yes. Oh, yeah, bro. That's and the I, homie. I remember when I saw him. And you know what was funny? Because he would always come, hey, hey, what's up, Tony? How you doing? And he was always like the nice security. Yeah. You know? And I was like, I'm good. I'm good, bro. Yeah. So when I saw him at the gym, Tony A., hey, I haven't seen you since so you were 21. I was like, yeah. that was me. <laughs> Keith. But yeah, much love to yeah. him, bro. Good dude. Yeah, bro. real fuck, real good dude. So we got another guy that dropped 19 bucks. What's up, Croft Dog? Looking good, bro. Still bumping that record. Stay Man, up, appreciate homie. appreciate you. Who is that? Juan. Huh? Juan what? Gallo. Gallo? Not my boy Juan. Big Wheezy? Juan Gallo. Juan Gallo. What's up, Juan? Yeah, Juan Gallo. Juanito. Yeah. Much love to you. Hey, you know what? I'm going to ask you. Whatever happened to Raymond? Where's he at? Raymond is in Mexico, man. Okay. Yeah, Raymond and my bro, my bro, Nato. And okay. The brothers out there, they in Mexico. Man. Look, look. I'll, Went back to the motherland. That's like my, that's how I learned my, right. like what you tell me. Look, I'm going to share something with you guys that back then, at least, I, I don't know how it is now, mm -hmm. but back then, black and brown were always together. Always, bro. Black and brown were always, always together. Today, I don't know how it is. Yeah. But black and brown were always together. And it's so, still like that today, Tom. Like, we got dudes, bro, solid. Because now we older, we don't give a fuck about none of that right. turf shit. Like, none of that kids Paul, got that shit, Yeah, bro. exactly, bro. We, we, we together, bro. Because we go through the same struggles. Yes. Same struggles. Bro, let me tell you something. Years ago, I know you met my mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother was a very dark woman. I remember when I lived when I lived in Compton, my mother was selling Avon door to door, and I remember when a white woman with a cold ass blue eyes <laughs> straight told my mother, "Get your black ass out of here." Told my mother that. Okay, my mother was same skin color as you. Mm -hmm. I never forgot that because I was like helping push up my brother in his little you know in the stroller. Yeah. You know, I never. Now when we say that. We don't have that against all white people. Mm -hmm. It was just those idiots. Certain ones, yeah. yeah just certain ones. But yep. but black and brown blend through the same struggle. So the same struggles. Yeah. Bro. So so when same we struggle. put up this record and we have black and brown on the cover, name me another cover that was before this one where we have black and brown together. Yeah, I don't know now. And thirty years later, 
we're still here. Yeah. That's the beautiful God's thing. Blessing. It's God's blessing. Yep. Absolutely. So other than that, Croft, you got any um, shout outs you want to give? Shout out to we all my people that just support me and they know who they are. I don't want to go through all the names. Shout out to the people that, that's important in my life. I don't want to go through all the names. It's going to take too long, but they know who they are. Yeah. And that's it, bro. Like, I, okay. it's just, like I said, man, reach out to the people. Talk to the people because this is a weird time right now, bro. Yes. There's a lot of shit going on. There's a lot of going I don't know what the fuck. Yeah. But it's crazy out there, Tom. It's like yeah. some weird shit. And my age, I'm an older dude, bro. And I just recently had a little confrontation with a dude in the gym. Like, I go there to work out and relieve my stress. But I had a little confrontation with the dude in the gym. Just a misunderstanding. Like, you know how the dudes that try to use two pieces of equipment or three? And it's, oh, I was using that. And it's like. Tell me who he is and I'll walk up behind him, bro. <laughs> no, but. Like, I don't give a fuck because I got out. you, homeboy. And I, and, I, and I talked to him and I got on him and I'm like, bro, you got to know who you're talking to. You're not talking to just a regular person. Right. You're not talking just to know, like, a dudes that's like your. You, you know, don't equal or whatever. And guess by the time we finished, he was like, man, I apologize, OG. Man, I'm sorry, this and this and that. And yeah. I guess what I said, because usually I'm the type like, nigga, fuck you. Because yeah. you did something stupid. But I said, you know what? Respect, bro. And I like that you apologize. And we yeah. kept it pushing. And we was like, cool. But just it's just a different time, bro. And, and I it have is. to learn the millennial, the Generation Z, Gen Z. The millennial generation, learn, yeah. I have to learn different shit about them and learning how they operate or what they think. Right. And how we move. Because we always move with respect, bro. We always ask, hey, are you cool? Absolutely. This or is it good? Bro, you using this? Or this? Absolutely. And this dude got all this shit going on. So I, I kind of see where it went left. But I was big enough to say, hey, I'm going to let this shit go. Right. Because usually that's not my style. I know Croft, you know, and it's, and it's crazy because I go to the gym too, five days a week, and sometimes some motherfuckers try to, some youngs try to talk shit, mm -hmm. and I, I'm ready to fucking pop off. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sabes que carnal? Slow the fuck down, bro. Yeah. Look, let me, if you're a young and you, you're listening, all I'm going to say is, por favor, be careful because you never know who you're talking who to. Who you're talking to. That's what I told you. You never that. know. Oh, I swear. That's what I told you. Yeah. I said, bro, you don't know. Like, bro, you got to be careful. And then when I told him that, I said, he, he, it looked like it snapped, like he got it. Yeah. And I like that he got it. Like, bro, you don't know who you're talking to. Yeah. Like, bro, this is real shit. Yeah. Like the dude in the airport. Right. Like I, I know. <laughs> like, nigga, you can I know. go to sleep right here. Right. Or I could call my nephews. No, he fell asleep. I could call my nephews. And nigga, you would be, you yeah. would make, you, like, I can, it, the shit could get ugly. In the airport, when you when you sucked out that motherfucker, he went to sleep, and like I got a few free kicks. <laughs> and if you're watching, I kicked you. But anyway, yeah, that was me. So, so. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like it's like I'm just more right mature, the patient. And he apologized, and I accepted it because usually, like when you push me over to the edge, I'm like, nigga, fuck, I'll fuck your apology, yeah. fuck you. Yeah. Now, like, nigga, you you tried me, so now I want to test you. Right. So, but we. Once again, I have to learn, and this I never, right. I'm never too old to learn stuff about what's going yeah, on, the right. new culture, Absolutely. the new music, the new generation. Because I don't want to be that old, the old man. Get off my lawn! Get the fuck, <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be the old Clint Eastwood, the old motherfucker, yeah, Gran Torino. Yeah. So. Okay, really quick. Somebody named Norberto Hernandez. Here's my deposit for that vinyl. So we. Oh shit! I'm gonna hit you up. We're going to look for a repressor that I know. Yeah. We'll do a meet and greet, sign in, and we'll have people come. Bro. Yeah. We're let's good. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. I'm with that okay, shit. other than that, um, you so you're done with your shout outs? Yeah, you, you want to shoot another shot? I'm going to test your balls, <laughs> test your hairs on your motherfucking. Cojones. You, you want me to sign over my fucking my life tonight? Okay. No, we could. We cool. No, we no, no. It. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. Come on. Yo. No. We're shooting at the guy. Come over here. Come over here. We shooting that goddamn okay. monkey sweat. Okay, right here. That's that monkey sweat. That's a monkey sweat. Okay. Just a little. Happy thirty year anniversary. I grew up on this. And who was this? Just a little one. No, no, no. Fuck that. Fill it all, all the Man, way he up. He at the house. He about to go. No, no, nah, nah, bullshit. Okay. <laughs> here, Tom. Here we go. 
<laughs> I ain't turning down no fades. Okay, now, now you know what? Uh, uh, really quick, oh, Alex gave to mention that name, that, that drop, that $10 right there. But uh, for those of you in San Diego, my boy Alonso, he dropped the shots right here. He's here from San Diego to celebrate our 30 year anniversary. So much love, much respect to him. And all you guys that are hating on him because he's here, fuck you. Alonso, that's my boy right there. Gracias. A la verga. Yeah, la verga. Real recognize real. So, see uh, how you know I know that, Tom? You know yeah, exactly, because I'm you grew up in. in. Look, we, we both grew up in the fucking hood. Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead, big dog. I've go been ahead. to Sinaloa. Alex. Sinaloa. Who? <laughs> Sinaloa. <laughs> Who was that? A uh, Sa Sam Samirian girl, one eight seven said happy thirtieth anniversary. A girl? Yeah. Yeah. Telecom. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I grew up on this one hundred and fist bumps. Oh, fist bumps. Hell yeah. So. Yeah. Before you get in, in trouble. I ain't gonna be able to get back in the house. <laughs> exactly. Okay. It's funny that we. Oh, I. I. I, 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 well, I gotta take a, a screech out of this. We got 333 three, three on the live chat for 30 year anniversary. Fuck, 30 year. Fuck, I just gave up my age. Oh, it just hit me, bro. I don't think I could do this one. Are you sure? Yeah, I just it just it just went. Okay, I'm going to call you on. Like on the this. flying saucer came down. Swing down, sweet cherry, and stop and let me ride. You're a pussy. No, let's do it. I ain't turning down no face. Fuck! I was hoping. Okay. A la verga. Hijo de la chingada madre. Fuck you, Satan. I know. That was homeboy name on the shit, Satan. <laughs> Satan, Satan. I'm fucking Satan. done. I know I'm fucking done. By the time this hit, this shit hits me, I'm gonna be running down L Street, butt motherfucking naked. I just gotta go piss. I gotta let this jungle snake loose. Yeah, that's water moccasin. Okay, <laughs> okay. Let me get my shout out, then you can go ahead and take that long ass a ball piss. Okay, uh, real quick. Uh, let me give a shout out to my boy Alex Cervantes. Cervantes, any Tony, is it really thirty years, bro? It's fucking thirty years, bro. 30 years. Not three inches, but thirty years. So yeah. <laughs> Know what I mean? A so, mean three inches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Somebody got some mean three inches. It ain't me, bro. I don't want to end, but my boy has to the run the enterprise. So it's not my hoot that he can't fix because he could do it in the mix. Okay. And then I'm going to give a shout out to my boy. D uh, here's how I know him Double D, my boy Dion, Doc Nasty. This has been my boy since the 80s, 86, so 87. I got this, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let, hold on. And my boy, Omar, my, my boy Omar, my boy Omar, there's nobody that knows Prince better than him. As a matter of fact, he sh should have been Prince. Hey, Omar got the fucking career, bro, with the fucking beach view. Like, That's him. You put, hey, girls come over. Omar shit, they panties is hit. Like, Omar is that dude, bro. That's him. Girls, y'all better look up Omar. He's got a collection of purple uh, fucking g -strings. But so, the fucking beach is right. That, yes. that motherfucker got yes. beachfront property. Yes. And then, like you come in, your panties hitting the ground, and you getting fucked in the house. Yeah. You got arcade games in that motherfucker. He's a straight panty dropper. Or more okay. is the shit. Then my boy, uh, uh, Anthony, the hip hop Jedi. Yeah. This is the guy that can use the force inappropriately. A girl can walk in, he'd be like, boom, her panties fucking drop. Okay. Like that's if you want, you want that power, talk to him. James JJ from the dental place, he can get all in a mouth, what all in fuck? your mouth. What the fuck? In a mouth. Are you drill in a mouth like? <sighs> JJ, <laughs> <laughs> tell him how you get in a <laughs> mouth. That's the only way. Put your ass to sleep and yeah. in your mouth. You wake up. Oh my jaw. Oh. Yeah. Well, now you're going to have his girl asking you questions after the interview. No, no, no. She know, like, that's, we're trying to get people in, in their mouth. In his mouth. Yeah, but in, uh, well. And not mouth. Mouth. No, no, yeah, yeah. Mouth. Yeah. Spell mouth. We're just fucking around. With okay. F's. Mouth. Okay. I'm going to give mouth. a. In your mouth. I'm going to give a shout out to my boy Alonso. Uh, hello. Uh, my boy Alonso for um, coming through all of for San Diego. Much love, much respect to him. And you know what's funny? My boy Alonso, he supports Rolling Radio. He supports me. And he gets a lot of hate 
from two fucking fat levas in San Diego because yeah. he, he supports me. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, so if you two fucking fat levas are watching in biker shorts and Crocs, it's a la pinche verga. Chinga tu madre, puto. Alonso's my homeboy, so we're good. We're good. So other than that, uh, my boy, uh, Biscanless, let me give a shout out to uh, my son for helping promote this. And let me give a shout Hold on. I got a couple more shout out for you guys to go take a piss. I do. Um, yes. Shaking. Hold on, hold on. I cannot forget. My boy Jen. Jungle Snake. Yeah, from my boy Jen from Fashion Town. Let me give a shout out to uh, Erica B and B Entertainment. Uh, let me give a shout out to Bella. Bella's a rapper. Let me give a shout out. I don't. I, don't, I swear to God. <laughs> Yo, I, I gotta go take a piss. I bro. know. Hold oh, on. Man. I don't. Please. Shit, man. Please hold on. And then <laughs> he's gonna whip out his fucking kiss now. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I'm. A, I'm almost down. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Hold on. <laughs> I gotta go take a fucking. Yeah. God damn it. Hold on. Okay. I got. You gonna bust my bladder, homie? Uh, yeah. Hold that little pee pee. Hold on. We're almost done. And then, um, fuck. Dude, it just fucked me up too. Like, yeah. to who I gotta give a shout out to. Uh, Erica, I ever said it, Bella. Uh, um, Alex, is there anybody that, that I forgot? Fuck. I can't think of the repress, the repress. Yeah, yo, yo, we're gonna repress this. We're gonna have a meet and greet. So once again, uh, let us know. <laughs> Fuck, I know I'm fucking fucking forgetting some somebody. So if I do, please forgive me. But what was that the people you called? everybody who called? Uh, AMG second uh, second to none. KK, my boy DJ Immortal, from all the way from Canada. My boy DJ Thoreau. Everybody, uh, fuck, I know I'm forgetting somebody, but uh, Magic Girl, let me give a shout out to Magic Girl once again for always got like mad love for me, uh, support, um, my boy Empty Wigs all the way from Fresno, and if I fucking forgot, yo, hit me tomorrow on the DM, but I know I for forgot like mad people, but other than that, all, everybody that supported us throughout 30 years, much love, much respect, thank you. We're going to leave you with a last song and a slideshow. Hopefully, you remember us. Oh, let me remember Priscilla from... I'm Col back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Priscilla from... Oh, uh, I'm back. I'm going to take a piss. Yo, switch us, switch us. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yo, yo, you know what? Jungle snake, man. That goddamn water bottle. Boy, that thing's still mean. Priscilla from Longmont, Colorado. Still out Thank you uh, for tuning in. Oh, come on, bro. Much love, much respect to you and your family. We can't go through the whole shit, bro. Yeah, I'm trying to. Don's Liquor, Neptune Liquor, L Street. The east side of Wilmot, oh, the west side of Wilmot, everybody. Ray, Ray, Sha, Sha. everybody. I got some from there. Thank <laughs> you, everybody. Much love, much respect. Wilmington's in the house. Compton's in the house. Compton. Yeah, you Cajun know what? Cedar, nigga, you already know. You know, you know what I mean? Compton and Wilmington, so you know you're in trouble. So we're going to go ahead and leave you with this slideshow. Much love, much respect. We out of here. Much love. Big dog, we out of here. Love, Tom. Alex. 30, man, 30. 30. God. Damn! Nah, I mean, we out of here. Hey, it's the K, and I'm kicking it with Cross. Waking on little bitty hoes, something off. Ain't you glad that I met ya? Cause if I didn't, then Cross was gonna get ya. Now I'ma be that real nice guy, you know, and play my game real slow. Because I'm smooth, nah, but I'ma still get you in the mood. Now I might break a little down to get you bent, just to make sure my time was well spent. And wait for the lights to go out I got one question, you know what it's about It's a simple little task, girl Don't get mad when I ask, could you? Take two at a time
Crying girl.